sit back and relax. It's time for your daily dose of Big D Energy. Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Big D Energy right Big here D. on the Woodward Sports Network. Sam Flannel, he's there pointing to the sky. Uh, my name is Neil Rule, of course, Flannel in for DMAC on a Friday. We got Spencer Raxter in the house. What up, Spenmo? What up, though? Your swimmers were representing. We'll get to that yeah. in just a little bit at, at the Oakland game last night. KG in the house. What's up? What up, though, man? How you doing? I'm living, bro. How you living? I'm good, man. I really can't wait for next week, though. It's free agent week. It I'm is. sick of the speculation, man. Let's get to it. It is. Uh, next week, yeah, March Madness in full swing. Yeah. NFL free care agency. About March I don't. <laughs> I'm going to make a bracket, though, but I, I don't. Yeah, absolutely. 50K bracket challenge. What was one? Yeah, yeah, man. Did, do it up. Get in there. You're shot at 50K. Um, real quick, DNC ENT, DNC <laughs> X Neil, get right, moves to 2 0. We gave it to you last night. Yep. The Jalen Duran double double, it cashes. I'm just, we're just that goaded, Flannel. Yeah. And it's funny because, we're, and we're going to get into the Pistons game later. Jalen Duran's double double wasn't even close to the story of the game. He yeah. obviously played well, right. but, uh, there are a couple future, hopefully future star guards that actually showed maybe they can play together. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. We shall see. We'll get into it. There is a lot yes. to touch on. The Red yeah. Wings and a must win. Yes. If they lose tonight, burn the car flag. <laughs> we'll, we'll get together. Honestly, like you're joking, but if you lose the fucking Coyotes for four in a row. Spenny, we're going we're gonna to congregate, yeah. and we're going to put them in the middle burn and that. pour gasoline and burn it up. Yeah. Burn that priority waste patch, and too. That, right yeah. There. Uh, the get right moves to 55 and 22. What Ooh. a record. Nice. Documented. Yeah. Documented. You, can go, you can go back and get them all. The yeah. glasses strike again. <laughs> well, that's the first time the glasses struck. Yeah. New, new glasses, same old results. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> new glasses, same dubs. <laughs> that's the way we operate. I like it, man. Uh, but yeah, jump into that WoodwardSports.com yep. chat. Thread. It's trade deadline too for the NHL. Right? Trade deadline for the NHL today. We'll we'll monitor. Uh, <laughs> although pretty much everybody's gone now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll touch on that too because those prices were insane. Yeah, prices were pretty wild. The price of a brick went up. Uh, Spemo, some sad news for you, man. Now, now you do you do a little anime podcast, yeah. right? Yeah, Spemo Rex speaks. Yeah, shout out. Check it out. Check it out. But uh, some sad news in the anime world. Huh? Yeah, it was uh, it was announced last night that uh, earlier in the week. Akira Toriyama had passed because of a uh, hematoma in his brain. And if you don't know who that is, Akira Toriyama is the creator, oh, illustrator, man. and author of the Dragon Ball series. Damn. So, yeah, he is a he's a legend. He's yeah. a legend in the world of anime. He's a legend in the world of manga. And it, it's tough, man. It's tough. He did a lot for a lot of people. You know, for the genre, did a lot for mm-hmm. the genre, a lot for the culture. He is single-handedly responsible for creating the most impactful and recognizable anime character of in the history time. of anything yeah. in Goku. And um, man, it sucks. He did. Yeah, he did man. a lot for my childhood. You know, shaped a lot of the stuff I watched growing up. So, it, it, the world's not going to be the same without him. Um, Super is is amazing too. If you read Dragon Ball Super, it's it's really amazing where it's at right now. So to to see who picks that up or where it gets picked up is going to be a, a, a different story for a different time. But just R.I.P. to Akira Toriyama. He is definitely one of the goats in the manga and anime world, and he will be sadly missed. Yeah, no, and, and normally, like I know, like we we la- you know you and I joke about your anime love and stuff like that, but that's Dragon Ball Z, Sam. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Like, that's next and level, that's, and that's yeah. Goku. Even I know that. Right. So uh, R.I.P. Yeah. R.I.P. Were you a Dragon Ball Z guy at all? No, I was not. What? I am. Ki- I'm the complete opposite of the end of the spectrum from Spenmo Rax. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. Were, it's you, just, yeah. were you just watching Bloomberg News as a kid? Like, no. What, no. what were hey, you doing? Like, at like 11 at night, they start doing the international <laughs> currency updates when the China market's open. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, man. I, during COVID, <laughs> I may or may not out on the deck have flipped on Bloomberg. You know, just just to get a look at just how the markets will be tomorrow. I feel you. And Adiz four eleven says so. He was like Stanley. He was basically the yeah. Stanley of of anime and manga. Yeah. It Arguably is. the best anime of all time. Yeah, yeah, it's it's tough, man. Yeah, so shout out, man. Sad, sad to hear that. Uh, sad to hear that. Um, 
In some better news, uh, by the way, uh, you guys keep it coming all day long like Chad Fisher. I'd never miss listening to Dr. Neil Rule with his master's degree. <laughs> Mike G says Neil has a Ph.D. Oh, Player haters degree, that's maybe. Nice. That's, yeah. I, I might hey, have hey, that. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Um, Chad Fisher, Ph.D. in wearing glasses like a nerd, LOL. I, I, nerd. I do like that. People were saying that on Twitter last night during the, uh, the Golden Grizzlies game. <laughs> yeah. nerd. There's a nerd on the TV screen. He's a nerd. Um, I do uh, – the, the Golden Grizzlies got the win. They're, they're moving on to the Horizon League semifinals. I'll Shout be leaving out. for Indianapolis. Shout out Oakland Golden Grizzlies. Rocket Watts, leading score in the game. Shout My out. guy, Rocket. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and when, and I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert on Oakland basketball or anything like that, but I did tune in. Yeah, you for got part your own the, basketball hey, problems. That's that's 100 percent fair. <laughs> I did uh, tune in for uh, for part of the game last night. Happy you got well, happy you. you guys got the win. Um, Purdue, Indiana, Purdue, Fort Wayne actually had about the same record as as Oakland, at least in, in total record. So I was yeah. kind of surprised that they got that draw in the first game, but still, it looks like to me that. You know, Rocket Watts played above himself, and Chris Conway and DQ Cole did as well. I just did a quick math. Shot a combined 18 of 24. That's, I mean, that's 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 outer space. In a game where Trey Townsend, Townsend only scored six, you had they those dub- guys They doubled up. him every time yeah, he touched yeah, the ball. Like, yeah. literally every single time. But that's the as thing. They should. Oakland made him pay, pay for 100%. it. Guys that, you know, you wouldn't expect to play that well or score that much, they did. So, congratulations to Oakland, and I really, really hope that you guys win your conference tournament. Because I would like to see Oakland University in the NCAA tournament. And they better start uh Doubling Trey Townsend because that's my goat. <laughs> that that is your goat. Um, but I was that, the first Michigan State scout to get it, get their eyes. You, on you were, yeah, yeah. You you're the one that's opened it up the mm-hmm. uh, whole Trey Townsend recruiting process, yep. I guess. Um, but the the reason, you know, obviously that was nice and that was fun. But Spemmo, you're a former swimmer. Yes. I and am. the and the Golden Grizzlies swim and dive team, who you know during uh during a, a pass game made national news by shaving their heads. Well, last night. <laughs> During visiting free throws, they took it up a couple notches. They waxed their chest. And there you see the evidence yep. right there. That's as real as it gets. Imagine looking Damn. at the rim for a free throw. And some people in the student section are waxing their chest. Like, full on, rip it off. It's awesome. I hate to say this is a white people moment, but... <laughs> It's definitely. It's, it's, I think it's trending that way, KG. Yeah. It's the swim team, KG. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Now right. they're used to it, like, but that's what you guys. And Spemmo, I wanted to ask you about this. You, yeah. you, you were probably the chest hair waxing insider of this show, yeah, because you were a swimmer. Did you do that? Uh, I did not wax my chest hair, Smart but man. I shaved. Straight razor. Straight razor. Yeah. Smart so man. what you do is. There's two days of divisions for the division meet in swim, at least in in the M- MSH M. HSAA, there are two days. The first day is where you qualify. So that's how you swim your first, and then you get in either top six or top 12. And then the second day, you come back and you actually compete for medals. So for the really good, sw- everybody else, they shave before the qualifying day. And so you go in there, and it takes, you know, 0.02 seconds off your time, but it still means yeah, something. Yeah, 100%. But the really good swimmers, we go and we swim the qualifiers, and then we go back and shave the night before the actual meet. And it's, you know, eyebrows down. Sleek. Completely shaved, yeah. And so I did that four times in my life. And I I like the feel. I, like, some girls think I'm weird because I like the feel of their legs when it's, like, a little hairy and it's, like, a little prickly. I that like is the, a little weird. I like the prickly feel. And so, like, when it's I would, all coming sh- together, when right? I would <laughs> shave my legs, it, I would sit there in class and just rub them for, like, weeks. <laughs> So I like that the like prickly hair feeling. I hey, like, everybody got something. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a oh turn God. off per se. Yeah. It's not the worst thing in the world. No, it's not. But yeah, I shaved four times in my life. Obviously, you don't have to shave where the suit is, but yeah, I shaved my legs, Mike G. I shaved my chest, my armpits, everything: arms, legs, Damn. feet, knuckles. Shave it all. And that's what the people were asking. That's what that's what they want to know. Uh, people I had to will, shave my back, too. I actually had to have somebody else shave my back. Cause, uh, <laughs> I know that was fun to yeah. ask. Mike Willette wants to know, on the next top five, I'd like to see Spenny uh, pick a Spenny from his swimming days. Ha, ha, ha. Are those in existence? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are on Facebook. Can we get one? Yeah, we can have lunch. Let's go down the rabbit hole and grab one. Okay. I like it. <laughs> do, we, do we need that or no? Yes. Do we, do, like we, do we Pitts, want it and not need it, or do we need it and not want it? I think we need it and not want it. I'm not going to lie. The I letter. always tune in to see what pictures are being used on, on your guys' top five list. So, uh, yes, we do need it. 
especially for how much uh, how much love we give to Spenmo Rex for being the excellent high school swimmer that he was. Why not? Why not? Why not show it off to the world? Why not show off a good uh, swimming picture? People need to see it. Yes. A DNC ENT keeps receipts. Was that Spenny versus Neil Coffee about an over eight and a half wins or over nine and a half wins? Either way, cash wins. that itch. Yeah. Yeah. I That's right. you coffee. That's right, man. I was emotional that day, but it's all right. I stand by it. Well, and you know what? I have to apologize. He preyed on my emotion. It's 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 a it's a character flaw I have where it's just I see a mark, I take him down. That's like, right. <laughs> you know, to quote rounders. Yeah. It's, Sam Flannel, that's how it works in the streets, man. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. I've had my fair share of uh, moments as well. So uh, if you if you do a show with Neil Rule, you're going to get got a time or two. No, you, you, you absolutely are. Um, all right, we got some nickel packages that we're going to work in the mix today. Yes, uh, football in the news. We got an NFL nickel package, an NFC North nickel package mm. as well. NCAA college football nickel package. Uh, Spenny concocted a five for fighting as well so an nhl you know nickel package but five minutes for fighting and, uh, instead did you hear neil that el mago is officially back he is he got his he first hit. hit of the spring yesterday one he's RBI. back baby one rbi in 15 at bats el mago <laughs> is back it was a single to center off of a high 94 mile per hour fastball. you ain't sneaking that cheese no. by the rat baby no. <laughs> <laughs> El Mago. El Mago is back, officially man. back. 15 at bats, one RBI. Watch out. Tigers, World Series, free money. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> El Mago, MVP. There is genuinely a lot to be excited about for the Detroit Tigers, both for this season and the future, but they still have that black hole at shortstop in El Mago or Javier Baez. He's just. Not only is he the worst everyday player in baseball, he doesn't fit at all with like what Scott Harris is trying to do philosophically, but they paid him. They paid him all that money, and I guess they're probably going to have to put him in the lineup. So that's, that's, that's depressing. That can definitely limit the ceiling of your team. What are you talking about? He's on a one-game hitting streak. He's on a one-game hitting streak. Congratulations. <laughs> and he also has on-base percentages in the 260s in yes, the last year, bad. an OPS of under 600. So... Obviously, you know that. He has a point six seven average in spring. <laughs> Is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> but he's crazy. back. He's back. He's crazy. Back. You know what? What a Friday! What a Friday! Could, can we scramble some bourbon out from the back? I mean, yeah, yeah, it's man. a kind of Friday. Pistons it is win. Right now. Oh, you win. Oh my God! Yeah. Gotta hit. Pistons won. Red Wings gonna win tonight. Yeah, man. This is about Please. as good as it gets, right? Yes. Turn up, man. Please win tonight. Red Oakland Wings. won. Javier yeah. Baez got a hit. Everything's lining up, yeah. man. Everything's. We'll have to stop by Dispo and go from there. Yeah. Absolutely. And you can visit Dispo Dispensary today because March Madness is officially here, although I won't be enjoying it too much. Dispo is giving away $1,000 to <laughs> wah, the best wah. bracket at each location. Battle Creek, Romeo, Whitmore Lake, Hazel Park, Bay City, North and South, and Ann Arbor. Go get your blank brackets now. Fill them out and return them by St. Paddy's Day and on March 17th to secure your entry for a chance at that $1,000. Dispo Dispensary, Dispo Shop com your local cannabis club buying your first film at chevrolet is much more than buying the car that will get you from point a to point b it's a place for first memories some big some small as she grows you're not just buying her a chevy you're buying into a feldman family with more than 700,000 vehicles sold from generation to generation, Feldman just keeps rolling. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here, and we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party, it's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans, starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Shots, 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 shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. 
Hey, how would you like to win $50,000? That's right. It's a Woodward Sports 50K Bracket Buster Challenge brought to you by Glorious Cannabis, Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, and of course, Soroki's Crispy Chicken and Pizza, one just down the road here on That's Woodward. Register for your chance to win at any Lady Jane's or Soroki's location, or just scan the QR code right there staring you in the face. The shot clock is ticking. Register today at WoodwardSportsBracket.com. That's WoodwardSportsBracket.com. And you could be $50,000 richer. And you can take Oakland to beat Duke. Okay. Oh, okay. Call your shot. You can take them. I have the call cooked up. And it will be the greatest call in the history of broadcasting oh, when they wow. beat you. You got the glasses now, I believe it. 100%. I love it. It's going to, oh my God. When, Duke, be when Duke loses, America wins. I know. I will say this, though, and a lot of people might not like it. I did root for them against Butler in the finals. Ooh. I didn't like those Butler teams. The, I like the one with Gordon Hayward. What has Butler ever done because to you? Right? Horizon just, League, stand up. I just, I didn't like Matt Howard. Why do you Howard. hate the Horizon League? Remember that League? center, Matt Howard, who was just that goofy guy who like did, had, had no talent, probably never got laid, but actually was Damn. one of their best <laughs> players on, on one of their teams. I just, I didn't like that team. I had a, a, a lot of respect for Gordon Hayward. I have respect for Shelvin Mack, but Matt Howard, you see, he this, didn't make the NBA. Those two did. This is the most Sam Flannel thing I of swear. all time, bro. It's, it's on the, brand. It is the most. This is like El Mago waving and missing at a slider three feet out of the strike zone. Oh yeah, and trust me, I don't usually root for Duke. I know that if I would have been, if I would have been really alive and understood it in the early '90s when they beat UNLV and when they beat my beloved Fab Five Wolverines, no, 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 I would have no. been they crushed. Did, they didn't beat UNLV. They did. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. No, UNLV beat Duke by 30 in the Natty the year before. Yes. Beat them by 30. Sure. And then they were compensated for their time in the rematch against Duke. Let's yeah. just say it like that. But UNLV should have went back to back, and they didn't because Duke well, beat them. No. Um, okay, you're, you know, you're, you're not... You don't understand what I'm putting down here. So, you know, there were circumstances in that UNLV Duke game, that second one. Okay, fair enough. There were circumstances. I get, I get it. Fair enough. Uh, wrapping up the Javi discussion, thankfully. Uh, <laughs> K.19, if Kreidler can hit 250 with the 320 OBP, he immediately gets the nod. Uh, K. Dot, he can't. Yeah. yeah. Well, Kreidler's not who we're counting Andy on. Andy Abanez yeah. looked pretty fucking good in spring so far. I think yeah. he's got four homers. He's been killing. Uh, Rack, a, z- a .067 batting average yeah and a point zero six seven on base percentage yeah one arbiato one rbi <laughs> that is right one um <laughs> 15 at bat rich rich baldwin <laughs> rich baldwin just released by us we're working on that we're yeah. working behind the scenes we may have a telethon we're gonna start yeah. a telethon i'm we're, telling you i think so too some I, money idea I, I think we're going to do that. That's what we should do on opening day because it would be even cooler. We could go out there hey. on the field. Spinny cooking. <laughs> take him off of his spot like they did with Austin Jackson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Spinny is cooking. Oh, man, that would be awesome. Hey, real quick, I saw in the chat that the uh, the Francis Ngannou Joshua fight, that's at 1 o'clock? Yeah. Really? Yes. Damn. Okay, I'm going to have to catch a replay stream. Who you got in that? I got Ngannou. I think he would. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, he, he, he beat, beat Tyson, Tyson Fury. Fury. Like, yeah. He, 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 he won that fight. Yeah. Nobody Tyson Fury tell. took him light. He thought yeah. it was going to be like a warm-up type deal. Got his ass So that So that is also a thing that I don't think Anthony Joshua will do that now. Now yeah. that we saw him put pause on Tyson Fury like that. But still. Like, Anthony Joshua is not a good defensive fighter. No, he though. is not. So, yeah. I think Ngannou can win this. I would love to see Ngannou and Deontay Wilder just see the two guys who punch the hardest in the world in the ring together just throwing well, as, long as, well, as long as Wilder doesn't get tired out walking to the right. ring. Yeah. With a Panther suit on. Yeah, I'm so over Deontay Wilder, buster. man. All right, we're going down a rabbit hole here. We're losing yeah, people by, by, by the by second. Bit. So, um, <laughs> you know, we got to do that. But real quick to wrap that up, UFC 299 tomorrow. Yes, our great guy. card. Our guy, Josh Parisian, on the card. So nice, check it nice. out. He'll be fighting in the pre- prelims on ESPN+. Plus. So uh, check that one out. Tall, tall task for him. Uh, but we'll be out there supporting. We'll it's be watching gr- it's it. It's a great card, man. Yeah, yes, it is. So that that certainly will be exciting. Uh, speaking of exciting, and, and I just I want to touch on this. We're going to get to the football. Everybody calm down for a second. <laughs> but the Pistons last night, that was what Flannel, and I know it's one of 60 or whatever the yeah, number is yeah. that they played. I know it's one of 60. I get that. But that's what everybody was talking about, Flannel. 
You know what I'm saying? Because I was told they can't play together. Yeah. You got to trade one. That's what I was told, right? Well, that last night was a piece of evidence that they can. And I get it. And trust me, I did the whole mental gymnastics thing where I was happy, I was excited, and then I looked, and that makes their record now 10-52. and 52. There is nothing that can happen this season that can salvage any, any modicum of a success. However, <laughs> however l l last night, Jaden Ivey, and for the record, and, and I got to say this about Jaden Ivey as well, he owed the Pistons that game because the last eight or nine games or so, he was atrocious. And he played very, very well. 34 points on 17 shots. That's a crazy efficiency. Cade got 32, 11 assists, also on pretty good efficiency as well. They shot a combined 10 of 17 from three. And one of the things that I liked, because one of the criticisms of, I would say, more Cade, but Cade and Ivy, or even that concept of them playing together down the stretch. After the Nets had, had tied the score at 98, Cade scored the next six, and Jaden Ivy hit a three to put them ahead by nine. After the Nets cut the lead to 109 to 104, Cade went on a personal 7 to 5 run where Cade scored seven Ooh. and the Nets scored five to totally close down the club. So if you're looking for a building block of, of uh, them playing together, and doing it successfully. I'm talking about Cade and Jade, Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivy. That was the game to do it. Can they do it again? Can they do it consistently? Only time will tell. But I think a lot of us Pistons fans, even though it was just one win out of 10 versus 52 losses, I think I speak for all of us when I say we needed to see that yeah. in the worst way. Mm -hmm. Breath of fresh air. Yes. No, it was, yes. and, and that was, and that was something. I think you drilled that flannel. We we did need to see that, and we saw that because, like, look. It's rounding into form now. And again, we're not going to spend a ton of time on this. It is rounding into form now where you need to make your choices moving forward. Yeah. Like, that, like that's, yeah. that's where it is right now with this team. So, you know, you guys know where I am. I'm, I'm, I'm Camp Cade Cunningham all the way. Still, yet and still. Mm -hmm. Still in there. I believe he is an elite basketball player. I believe he is an all-star. The numbers dictate that he will be an all-star in this league. He, and we've seen this has become almost the norm now. The third, you know, the 25 to 30 with seven and seven. Yep. Like you see that, that is elite. Those are all-star numbers. Now you're not going to get on the all-star team when you're nine and 50 or whatever the Pistons are. <laughs> one and one when I call the games, by the way. I just let there it be go. known. They're a playoff yeah. team when I call the games. Hey, yeah. But anyway, that being said, <laughs> That I I know what Cade Cunningham is. I, I I am I am prepared after this season, flannel. I am prepared to check that box. You gotta you gotta give your your rookie max extension to him. Yeah. He's a building block. Period. End of story. Yeah. I, no, I 100% agree with that. I mean, if you just look at his numbers on the season, he's played 52 games, which we would all would have taken out of a possible 62. He's given you averages of 24, 22, 4, and 8 on 45, 36, 86 shooting splits, which means he's actually upped his three-point percentage to a, to a percentage that I think we would have all been okay with. Those are all-star numbers. We would have all taken that a million times out of a million if you were guaranteed those would have been Cade Cunningham's numbers. You would have expected them to have more wins, but the reality is is that Cade Cunningham is putting up those numbers, and I'm not knocking him. Jaden Ivey's putting up 15-4-4 four and four on 45-35-76 shooting splits. Cade Cunningham's the guy. I like Jaden Ivey a lot, but Cade Cunningham, he's bigger. He, I mean, he's taller. He's a better defender. He's a better passer. I think he's a smarter basketball player. It's just Jaden Ivey his, brings the sizzle and the athleticism that Cade Cunningham doesn't certainly, certainly doesn't have. So to me, I am all in on the Cade train as well. I think we, there were some questions about his health, but he's played 52 out of 62 games, and yeah. hopefully that continues to go up as the seasons go along. But yes, 100%, do not trade Cade Cunningham. I think if you want to trade Cade and give the keys to Jaden Ivey, you are insane, yeah. Sam Stick Day. <laughs> he's still on that. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Mike G, is it too early to do a Pistons mock draft? <laughs> Mike G, it is never too early. You ask and you shall receive. Here we go. Tankathon.com, by the way, the greatest website that maybe has ever been invented. All right. I'm going to sim the lottery for you, and then I'll do the mock draft for you. Is everybody ready to go here? I'm, I'm going to do this let's, real quick. Let's do it. All right. Man. Here we go. Simming the lottery. Detroit Pistons win the number one pick. <laughs> right there. There you go. I told you guys this. But there is no more guarantee in life than the Pistons winning this lottery. <laughs> I no, bet my I'm, house on it. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going Spencer Raxer with the Spurs last year. Yeah. And I guarantee that the Pistons win this one. Uh, Alexandre Saar from Perth, Australia. seven foot one, two 217 pounds. Averaging 20 and 9 uh, in Australia with three blocks. 
So there you go. Here's an idea. You are a piston. Trade to pick. I would like that. Yeah. No more 20 euros. I agree with that. Yeah. I, I think we're all in lockstep there. Trade Said. the pick for what? All right. You know what, then? Since we're doing this real Mikel quick. Bridges. <laughs> give me the path, then, KG. What's the move? Trade the pick? Okay. For what? For, for who? Brandon Ingram. Oh, man. I would. As easy put it yesterday, I would mail myself if we traded that pick for Brandon Ingram. Give them whatever the hell they want. Give them Little Caesars pizza if you want to, too. Okay. I'm sure they will take that. Yeah. I would love <laughs> to have Brandon Ingram as a piston. But you said give you somebody, I gave you no, somebody. No, give me, and over here in the real world, KG, I mean, all right? Understand. Like, get out of La La Land and come over here and tell me. <laughs> Mikel Bridges, I think. That's realistic. Max it out? Yeah, you'd have to. That's not realistic. Now that I'm on. Yeah. That I'm on. Yeah. And you guys, you guys know how I operate with this. he's a Mossy guy. If you, you know, if you want to do this, then you got to go all the way here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't agree with that, though? Do you want another 20-year-old on this team? Um, the Bridges thing really, really intrigues me. Who would you trade for? What? what I'm probably just going to – because what's the return, KG? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you going to get? I mean, you're you not don't want get this pick. Regardless. You don't want this pick and you're a Pistons fan. Who wants it then? Well, if it's a top five pick, though, it'll, yeah. it's val it has value. We don't want it because we don't want a team with five top five picks on it. Like, we yeah. don't want it because we don't need another young guy. There's teams that will want this pick. Like who? Like the Nets. The Nets would want this get pick. Her. They're openly tanking. They want to get that number one pick. I think the Pelicans would want this pick. Yeah. There, there are some teams that would want this pick. It's just the situation we are in is adding a 19-year-old, no matter who it is, unless it's Victor Wembanyama, adding a 19-year-old to this team is not going to help. <laughs> Sue you. Of course the scum NBA gives the Pistons number one on a year uh, with mids. <laughs> yeah. If you guys, speaking of Victor Wembanyama, have you seen the shit that that man has been doing in yeah, the league? Yeah. He's about he to average 20, 10, 10, and 5. I know. And he's. Four. You see he's out, though, yeah. and he's going to be out again, and Popovich is saying, well, hopefully we get him back next week. They're starting that yeah. track. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, that's the Spurs special. Yeah. I know you happy, Neil. No, I'm not wink, happy. Wink, wink, wink nudge. <laughs> I'm never happy, KG. <laughs> what? The, you, you know. I just... We should, he should be on this team. He should. But the NBA doesn't love us. Our front court was supposed to be fucking Wembenyama and, and Jalen Duran. Oh. Now it's <laughs> with Kate. Isaiah Stewart and Jalen Duran. The NBA discourages open tanking. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, okay, that's it. Let's do the football stuff when we come back. Let's How go. about that, everybody? Let's do that it's Nickel Package Friday. NFL, NFC North, NCAA, all of it. Tell them about Guardian. Yes. Let Guardian Alarm offer you customized solutions from real experts. Our professional technicians take the time to recommend security and automation solutions specific to your needs. 24-7 professional monitoring. Call us anytime, day or night, and know that a Guardian team member will stay on the phone as long as needed. Technology backed by people. Your safety and security deserves technology that's been proven to work and people have been proven to care. Call 1-800-STAY-OUT. That's 1-800-STAY-OUT. Stay Guardian Alarm, your local security experts. Sports love wearing clothes, then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends, impress your boss, impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. The new glorious ice water bubble hash pre-roll now with diamonds, constantly pushing to create the best canna experience. The perfect boost comes from the added touch of pure THC diamond dust, allowing flour with only the highest terps, making the best better. Glorious Cannabis, check us out at your local retailer or GloriousCanna.com. 
All right, everybody. Welcome back to a condensed nickel package Friday. You know we did this all football season long, and we'll get back to it. But I think, you know, with the stakes being raised in this town, I think we do need to make this a staple on Fridays. Like a condensed nickel Absolutely. package. Spin it around the division. Spin it around the league. Take a look at college. All of it. Y'all ready to rock? Absolutely. Spencer Raxter, if you would be so kind as to do the honors. Uh, NFL? All right, NFL. All let's right. do it. First question of the NFL nickel package. Look around the league at all of the safeties being cut. Quandre Diggs, Jamal Adams, Justin Simmons. There is a glut of safeties now available, which will drive their price down. Are safeties the new running back? Ooh. It, it seems that way, doesn't it, man? I mean, like <sighs> low-key. If you if you have a high price safety in this league and you're in financial peril, yeah, boom, you're yeah, out of that's here. That's the first to cut. Yeah, yeah they, they are always the first to cut. It seems like you like, can't you can't replace one pretty easy. N- and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like in a world, and we saw we saw the beginning of. Remember last year when the Lions signed Chauncey Gardner Johnson, San Flannel's favorite player, for <laughs> yeah. six million dollars, and we all stood around and went, "What the hell? Yep. Yeah. Six million dollars? Yep. The writing was on the wall for this. Yeah, and it's happening already." But we are seeing it anytime. And that's why, easy. Remember the whole Kyle Hamilton thing? Uh, come on. Don't, remember don't, that? don't, don't do no, that. No, do you Kyle remember Hamilton, that, though? Kyle Hamilton's one of the best safeties in the NFL. Yeah, he's right. first team all pro. Right. No, team all pro. I, and, you're, and you're paying him $16 million. Yeah. He's earned his money. You though. know what I'm saying? He has. He's been great. I don't want any Kyle Hamilton slander. I'm not slandering him. I'm just saying, though, that's like, that's like taking a, a running back at one. No, I, you know? I I understand. I just think it's gonna rile up some of the Lions fans who uh, just want to hate on everyone that, like, like you know what I mean. Who are gonna say that Kirby Joseph is a better safety than Kyle Hamilton? Which, if you believe that, you are on drugs. But yeah, anywho, it's just objectively let me false. let me just j- j- just say this as a little bit of a counter. I get what you're saying to some extent, but we all know right now Jamal Adams stinks and he can't stay healthy. He's horrible. Yeah. Quandre Diggs was the 87th ranked safety last season, according to PFF. 13 Eddie, million a year, too. A- absolutely. Eddie Jackson, another one who was released. Wait by, a minute. You mean Quandre Diggs wasn't good? Quandre Diggs was not good last year. That's it. Those are the words of Sam Flannel. Do not necessarily reflect the views and values of Neil Rule <laughs> yep. or Woodward Sports. And I get it. PFF isn't everything. But just listen to this. Eddie Jackson, another safety who was released, a former All-Pro from the Bears, was the 76th ranked safety, according to PFF, last year. Jordan Poyer was the 46th, and Justin Simmons was the 46th. 42nd. I think that a lot of these guys have made it easier for them to be cut because of their, I don't even want to necessarily say poor play, but their play that's not up to their standards as guys who have been pro bowlers before. So it, I think that plays a role as well, and it makes them very, very easy to be expendable. All right, second down. Second down, next question of the NFL nickel package. Steelers meeting with Russell Wilson. Could Russ even bring down Mike Tom? It, it's 100% possible. Yeah, if there's one person who could do it, it's Russell If Wilson. there is one yeah. person in this league, and look, for whatever reason, Mike Tomlin's become like this divisive thing between like this show and the chat. There are some Mike Tomlin haters out there, which I don't I don't understand yeah, that's how, yeah. how that's possible. That's I, crazy. I don't get that. Mike Tomlin's the man. And his yeah. beard is impeccable. You hate Mike Tomlin? I think Mike Tomlin's overrated. Oh, oh 100%. Come on. Based on what? I got... I got you guys here. I got you. I got you. To me, he is the exact same as Sean Payton, John Harbaugh, and Mike McCarthy. And that's all borne out by the fact that Mike McCarthy has an 8-10 and 10 playoff record. Sean Payton's is 9-8. and 8, John Harbaugh's is 12-10. And, and Mike McCarthy's is 11-11. 11 and 11. I'm just saying, for all of the all of the praise Mike Tomlin gets for having a winning a winning record or a 500 record or above every single year, he's missed the playoffs six times and has had many, many, many playoff flameouts and only has one Super Bowl. The same as everybody else I just mentioned. But everybody wants to slander Sean Payton and Mike McCarthy like they're whipping boys or something, but say, "Oh my God, Mike Tomlin!" Look the at the coach roster. Ever. Look at the roster that Mike McCarthy did that with last year. You give Sean, you give uh, Mike Tomlin that roster. Uh, imagine they're yeah. winning a couple playoff. Games. He not, took Kenny Pickett and company to the playoffs. Mason right. Rudolph. Come on. They, okay. they, they should stop the game and put him in the Hall of Fame right okay. now, just for that. Don't cry poor when it comes to Mike Tomlin. Listen to some of the players he's had over the years: Troy Palomalo, Antonio Brown, Mika Fitzpatrick. Cam Hayward, Marquise Pouncey, David DeCastro, TJ Watt, Le'Veon Bell, Who's, Ben Roethlisberger. And what did any of those guys do when they weren't around Mike Tomlin? 
So what? They, but well, he, what did they do? He underachieved So me thinks it couldn't be Mike Tomlin then, right? And okay, a, a lot of those players haven't had the opportunity to do much be, much outside of them, like a TJ Watt, for example, or Big Ben. Well, Big Ben, he started with Bill Cowher, but still. I'm just saying still, that. Yeah, who's been the quarterback since Big Ben yeah. in his prime, though? I they understand haven't had a quarterback. that, but, but Mike Tomlin underachieved in the playoffs. He 100% did. He has a losing playoff record. Yeah, because he's got Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph as a quarterback in years. the playoffs. He had the, the entire prime of Ben Roethlisberger. Hey. He had the entire fucking prime of Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> I guess he sucks too when he's getting his gold jacket. Stop it! He's a good coach, but he is not better than John Harbaugh, Sean Payton, well, or Mike McCarthy. He's well, the same. They're all in the same room. What are you going to do when, when Mike Tomlin gets his gold jacket? He's going to get one, but so are all the other guys that I mentioned. So is Sean Payton. So is John Harbaugh. So is Mike McCarthy. They're all in one and the same. Mike Tomlin is not discernibly better than any of them. Mike Tomlin is discernibly better than Mike McCarthy. See, yes. Mike McCarthy numbers, is by yes. far the worst out of those guys you just mentioned. Uh, but I the, would agree. Uh, Mike McCarthy, though, has a better playoff record. Yeah, because he had Aaron Look Rodgers. Look at his team. gets told <laughs> every day by you, Neil, ruined by the chat. Sucks and sucks in the playoffs. He Who does? does? Aaron Rodgers. I mean, coming down the stretch, he yeah, does. he does. Okay, f oh, he doesn't, by the way. Look at the numbers, but also, so Mike. Well, McCarthy, how, how many of those are this decade? And the numbers by the way. don't result in anything. Oh, yeah. congratulate! Uh, oh, nothing. You mean the Super Bowl that he won back hey, in the day? A uh, Super yeah, Bowl what, more recently years than, ago. A Super Bowl more recently than Mike Tomlin. A Actually, Super Bowl. Do you think years Mike ago. McCarthy is a better coach than Mike Tomlin? Is I that what you're saying right now? The same. You're, in, the same you're room. insane. You are, you are insane. insane. You put Mike Tomlin on the Dallas Cowboys. They are going to the Super Bowl. Uh, yes. Are you I don't kidding me? All that? Are you kidding? I do. Mike Tomlin doesn't go to the Super Bowl. When's the last time he was there? 2009. Mike drop. I win. You lose. But you guys will never concede victory. The same Super Bowl as Aaron Rodgers. The That's same it. Super Bowl that Aaron Rodgers <laughs> beat him in. Stop it, KG. Stop it. Stop. And up. Mike McCarthy. <laughs> If you want to say Mike Tomlin and John Harbaugh are the same level of coach, I'm agreeing with John you. John Harbaugh's better but than But if Mike. you're saying that Mike McCarthy is the same level of coach as Mike Tomlin and John Harbaugh, you're fucking a lunatic. What has Mike Tomlin done that is just so unbelievably great? That's my Took thing. Mason Rudolph right. and Kenny Pickett to the playoff. Boom, mic drop. That's it. Fun. You're you're football Jesus if you do that. The you're football Jesus. You're not football Jesus record. if you do that. Like, come you on know, now. with TJ Watt on the yeah. defense and Alex Highsmith and all of that. I'm just saying, too. Football Jesus. Okay, fine. Um, but the, the answer to your question, yes, Russell Wilson can bring down Mike Tomlin. The Steelers better not do this. Yeah. They better not do it. But they might. I think it could work. And if Mike Tomlin gets in the playoffs with Russ as the quarterback – then he should get a second gold no, jacket. No, because Russell Wilson is objectively better than anything the Steelers had last year. That's not saying much. I, I understand that, but like on a cheaper contract, I think it could okay. work in the, with the Steelers. I really do. I agree with Sam. It's a possibility it could work. Am I saying it's going to work? No, but it's definitely and possible. And Russell Wilson actually put up good numbers last year. He did. 26 touchdowns, 8 picks. See, again, ben Flannel, those Goff. numbers are irrelevant. They are not irrelevant. irrelevant. Yes, they are, Flannel. Okay. They cut him! I... Okay, they fine. took the you know who you know who will be the highest paid quarterback in the league this year? Russell what? Wilson from the Broncos to not play for him. So tell me again about the numbers, because I'll tell you about Russell Wilson, the person. I'm not gonna lie. Tell you, me. I'm not gonna lie, you got me there. But I also tell think me. that he could translate to the Steelers on a on a uh, based on what? Because based on all the great work he no, did no, no, in no, Denver? No, no. Because the, the problem with him with Russell Wilson on the Broncos was his contract. It wasn't necessarily him. He was a part of it, but on a cheaper contract than the Steelers, I, know. I think he'd it be was better. only him. Doing lunges on the airplane, oh, having an office that he doesn't go to, <laughs> right. having a parking spot where no one else has one, and Be, being the only guy allowed to bring his family to training camp. Right. Fair. Team That's three. all fair. It was a disaster with the Broncos, but I think he's better than anything that the Steelers had last year. He sunk the franchise flannel. The franchise they have to sit this year out. The because Bronco, of him. The Broncos weren't shit anyway since Peyton yeah. Manning's last year. No, they were especially year. weren't and shit once they brought in Russell Wilson. Fair. 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 I'm not going to put it all on Russ because they hired Nathaniel Hackett thinking they would get Aaron Rodgers, and that never happened, so they had to maneuver, and that's what resulted in Russell Wilson. So. But Nathaniel Hackett doesn't torpedo your franchise. Russell Wilson does. Well, Nathaniel Hackett can do that too. Russell yeah. Wilson <laughs> he does. He didn't have the I, I think it's partially on Broncos ownership as well. So I won't put it all but on But it's him. mainly on Russell it's, Wilson. It's a lot to do with him, though. And his action it's, figure hair. It is a lot to do with him. And that's what you get when you do lunges on the team plane. But maybe I'm he sorry. got humbled. Maybe he got humbled. If he goes Fuck to no, the Steelers. Yeah, I know. Maybe. Right? I'm just saying, if he goes chance. to. You think Mike Tomlin's going to put up with that bullshit? If he signs him? 
Come I, on you now. know what? You know what? I take that back. I do want to see it. Yeah, I, I hope he does do it. <laughs> Because I want to see Mike Tomlin in deal the with press that. conference. Oh yeah. my God, his press conference is You know what, fired. KG? You just opened my eyes to that. I do want that now. I told you. I love that kind of it's stuff. It's a win win because if he, if he works out, great. If not, it's going to be a spectacle. Uh, Steve and David. But Sam has a wife. <laughs> I do. God, okay. I, I got to block this guy. <laughs> Fucking just, just, a, just an idiot, man. <laughs> McCarthy won with Matt Flynn and Dak Prescott. Come on, He bro. won, what, one game with Matt <laughs> yeah. Flynn? Like, and what did he do with that? What has no, he won right. with but Dak Prescott? How much has he won he, with Dak Prescott? All I'm saying Fucking is ridiculous, there's no dude. universe that when you look at their resumes, you can say that Mike McCarthy is gutter trash and Mike Tomlin's one of the best coaches ever. Mike McCarthy that doesn't has exist. The you got to look past the numbers, Flannel. How like, can he get to a Super I know, Bowl? I know it's hard for you to do, but you got to look past the numbers. Yeah, yeah that, Mike Tomlin's that, losing it. playoff record, but nobody cares about that. Nobody Because it's more than that. It's more than that. He has a losing playoff record. How does Mike McCarthy not get the Cowboys to a Super Bowl with that roster? I'm not saying Mike McCarthy is elite or anything. I'm just saying that Mike Tomlin is highly, highly overvalued. And his resume is actually just the same as Mike McCarthy's. And if you want to if, you, if want, you don't have a losing season in two decades, yeah. you're a good coach in the NFL. Did I say you're he's a, good, not a coach good coach in the NFL? He's a very good you coach. are a great coach in the NFL. He Who is, does that? Name, well, name all the coaches that have done that. I can't name them because they probably don't exist. But right. he also missed the playoffs six times. During, I don't care about those eight and eight seasons where he missed the playoffs. I, I know people just want to like deify Mike Tomlin, but he has been a disappointment in the playoffs. I don't care what any of you say. Stop losing in the first round every single year. Yeah, Stop I losing know. to the fucking you're Patriots right. every year. I know. You're right. It is. They should go Stop in. They should the go Patriots into Arrowhead here. with Kenny Pickett and beat Patrick Mahomes. No, you're no, right. No, I'm not saying. You're I'm, absolutely right. I'm not. No, you are. You're, you're you're crucifying him for it. I'm not crucifying for that. That's one of ten playoff losses. You're right. He should go into Buffalo against your God, Josh Allen, and <laughs> and win with who was even the quarter? Was it Mason, Mason Rudolph? Rudolph. Mason Rudolph. Yeah. Okay, with Mason Rudolph. Okay. Well, that's another loss there. Yeah, that's uh, and that would and if you take those away, he's a 500 playoff coach. And I am not, I don't want to fucking hear crying poor for Mike Tomlin's rosters back in the day. You can say about recent quarterback play, I will give you that. But some of those rosters and those defenses that he had back in the day and offenses, quite frankly, those AB and Le'Veon Bell and Ben So you're crucifying him for not beating Tom Brady in the playoffs? I am saying that at, they never beat the Patriots. The Baltimore Ravens beat the Patriots from time to time. The Colts or whoever Peyton Manning was on beat the Patriots from time oh, to time. Peyton Manning got worked in the playoffs. No, he fucking worked did Worked in the playoffs he by has, them. He has a winning record against Tom Brady in the playoffs. Worked. Okay, he got not, worked in the playoffs. I, he was an average quarterback in the playoffs. I gave you a playoffs. fucking fact there. I know he, overall he was, but yes, Peyton, Manning has a, Peyton Manning has a winning record against Tom Brady in the playoffs head-to-head. Who got more to Super Bowls? Uh, fine, but my fact still matters. I know you guys don't want to hear it because I'm flannel Sam and you want to disagree with every fucking thing I say, <laughs> but I do my research. Dude, you pay, guys just say shit just to say shit. I'm pay, not talking about you guys. I'm talking about I, you guys I'll, in the chat. I'll, I'll say this. Seafood Fest is back <laughs> at Big Boy. Catch it while you can. Dive into the fish and chips, the new Parmesan crusted cod, and the perfectly fried clam strip platter. And, of course, the delicious fish sandwich. That's a Lent staple. Big boy, a must try. That's right, the new mango iced tea, the ultimate compliment to the popcorn shrimp, shrimp Alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Every day is a fish fry at Big Boy. And don't forget, every Friday night, you know, tonight, the all-you-can-eat seafood buffet. Get to your local Big Boy today.
any Lady Jane's haircuts for men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists and register for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win an all-expenses-paid suite for the 2024 NCAA tournament for you and five of your best buds. That's right, college basketball's most elite event. You and your five best friends just get to any Lady Jane's today for an award-winning haircut experience and automatically register to win the trip of your dreams. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. What's up, everybody? Tired of the same old Detroit sports wearables? We got you covered. That's right. The best Detroit sports wearables in town. Woodwardsports.com slash shop. Beanie season, hoodie season still because it's still freezing cold outside. Baseball, football, basketball, hockey. There's Woodward Sports golf line as well. Woodwardsports.com slash shop. All right, well, we're back at it. We'll try this again. Big D Energy Woodward <laughs> Sports say. Network on a nickel package Friday. Neil Rule, the indomitable Sam Flannel, <laughs> KG Spencer Raxter here in the house. Well, we got to third down, right? Yep. We're up to third yep. down now. Yeah. Second NFL. down was hectic, though. Was and awesome. if you like that one, stick around for this one. All right, third down. Third down, third question of the nickel package. Are the Bills squandering Josh Allen, or is it the other way around? Ooh. You guys, you guys know where I'm going with that that's one. That's a good question. Because at the end of the day, it's on the QB. He gets the, he gets the praise. He gets the shine. And when they don't win, he's to blame. This is tough, and though. It, Sean McDermott, though, I mean, we, we let him off the hook. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that, KG. You wait. Yeah, yeah, no, I, <laughs> because this is how it works in this league. When you're the QB and you have home playoff games and you don't get it done, what else can you ask for? What else can you ask for? For real. Obviously, that team's good enough to get the home field, right? Yeah. So you should be able to do something with it. But time after time, in the biggest moments, he comes up empty. In the biggest moments, he just does. And yeah. I know Flannel's going to melt down again about that. <laughs> but in the end, I'm right, you're wrong. I win, you lose. <laughs> because Josh Allen, when everything is on the line, when all the chips are in the middle of the table, Josh Allen busts every single time. He does. That's the way it is. At some point, the QB's got to rise up. At some point, he's out of excuses, Flannel. But go ahead and make excuses, Flannel. All right, no, I'm actually not going to make excuses. I am going to give a little bit of context. And let me start with this. I'm going to base this off of the premise that Josh Allen is an excellent regular season quarterback. Yes, and he what is. he's done with the Buffalo Bills and resurrecting that franchise and helping be a big part in making them consistent division winners after 20-plus years of dormancy is impressive. So I'm going to base my entire Josh Allen analysis based off of what he's done against the Kansas City Chiefs. And let me just say this. I think Josh Allen, the more I look at it, the more I dive into it, is one of the unluckiest quarterbacks in NFL history. Let me, and, and let me finish. Let me just finish. He had the, Wait a uh, minute. Are you going to add nuance to something? I am going to add nuance to something. Why? What changed? Uh, a lot has changed. <laughs> oh. I added a lot of oh, nuance okay. to the Because it's your boy. Thing. All right, I got no, you. No, wait, hold on, hold on, hold Chuck on. Chuck Brewer, Sam wants to use context. Interesting. <laughs> Chuck Brewer, you're a fucking clown. Get Ooh. out of the chat because all you do is make Dom these Rivera, 88. <laughs> Sam wants to talk context? All you do is make those gotcha arguments that are terrible. You do no research. You just come into the chat just to say shit. Sorry. Anywho. You are trash! Shout out Dom Rivera, 88, though. Caught up with them after the Oakland game yesterday. Shout out. Yeah, shout out, man. One all of right. the OGs. All, all right, right, go yeah. ahead. I'm going to be very, very calm about this. Josh Allen had the, <laughs> had the unfortunate circumstances of playing his prime against a quarterback that was better than him, a team that was better coached, and a team that was better run. I'm, of course, talking about the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Brent Beach, and all of that. The shining example of an organization of the last five years, which has, compl which has directly correlated with Josh Allen's prime. So what has Josh Allen done when he's gone up against the Kansas City Chiefs? The Bills averaged 28 points per game in their three playoff losses to the Kansas City Chiefs. The defense gave up 35.7. 35.7. I bet you all didn't know that. Now you do. Josh Allen and those three <laughs> combined playoff games. Seven touchdowns, one interception, and two rushing touchdowns. And oh, by the way, in those three games combined, he rushed for 228 yards on 7.6 yards per carry on the aforementioned two rushing touchdowns. And it gets better. Trust me. In 2020, Josh Allen had 88 rushing yards in the game against the Kansas City Chiefs. The next closest, 17. 
2021, Josh Allen had 68. The next closest, 26. In 2023, Josh Allen had 72. The next closest, 61. James Cook actually had a pretty good game. But Can I give you some live feedback? Okay, give you some. GW the kid. Flannel rambles worse than Rosside. My goodness. All right, proceed. No, I just <laughs> I just have, have, have a lot to say about it. My point is that he went up against a juggernaut and he fell short, but it wasn't his fault at all. It's just the Kansas City Chiefs are better. Patrick Mahomes is better. Andy Reid is a lot better than Sean McDermott, and uh, Brent Veach is the best GM in football right now. So, sure. and the Buffalo Bills, I don't even know who their GM is, but they've uh, had to suffer from some of the contracts that they've given. As, as you've seen, they've cut a, a lot of people recently. Yeah. So Josh Allen was more the victim of circumstance than anything because by the numbers and even against the Kansas but City the Chiefs, numbers. he is an excellent playoff quarterback who was carrying his team on his back. But when he gets that playoff game at home, he comes up empty. He didn't come up empty, though. He had three total touchdowns and no turnovers. Uh, no, see, like, it's a pass-fail scenario. Okay, fine. So, so Pass-fail. All right, fine, fine. And you know what? I'll say this for the people who say I have no context. The game against the Cincinnati Bengals where he led his offense to 10 points, his fault. Yeah. That was his fault. 100% his fault. Those Where'd Kansas they play that game at? They played that game at home. Huh, weird. Those Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> games, though, were not his fault in the slightest. He huh. was the best thing that that team had in every weird. single one of those that's games. Whole, that's my whole Aaron Rodgers thing. Like, get conference championship games at home year after year after year, yeah. empty after empty after empty. Sorry, man. You can't be set up any better. And then it's on no, you. No, it's, it's, it's not on set up any better. The, the, the nature of the position. The defense gave 35.7 points per game in the games they played against nature the Nature of the position. Yeah. And also, if Josh Allen sucks so bad, so does every other fucking quarterback in the NFL not named Patrick Mahomes because Patrick Mahomes ain't got no peers. Joe Burrow. Well, the, the thing about it is I don't hear how elite all the other quarterbacks, how he's in Patrick Mahomes' stratosphere, how about how he's that guy, about who he's the prototypical quarterback. Can we all agree then that Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow are all pretty much the same guy? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, Allen, uh, Allen Industries turnover factories, though, pump out, <laughs> pump out a third shift, though. But Lamar Jackson is objectively a morbid playoff quarterback. Yes. He is a morbid playoff quarterback. He hasn't done jack. Josh Allen at least has had great playoff Does performances. Does Joe Burrow still have a winning record against Patrick Holmes? Yeah, three I and think one. He does. Uh, three and one. Do you want to hear some more context? No, I don't. I want to move on to fourth down. Well, I'm going to give you that context. In <laughs> Joe Burrow's two playoff games against the Kansas City Chiefs, one of them was actually a win. The offense gave up, scored 23.5 points per game, which is 4.5 4 less than Josh Allen's Buffalo Bills have scored in the Buffalo games against the Kansas City Chiefs. And the defense has given up 23.5 points per game, which is a full 12.2 less than the Buffalo Bills defense has given up. Joe Burrow benefited from the one playoff choke in Patrick Mahomes' career, that second half where uh, it also started with the first half yep. when they it's let always the clock something. run out. No, it's I, always, there's always a hook. I know. There's always a butt. Yeah. Always. There's a lot of context to that. Joe Bur Josh Allen's better than Joe Burrow. Maybe Josh Allen just isn't cool enough and not ah. a good enough leader to inspire his defense. <laughs> because he wears those cool outfits and those sunglasses to the stadium and has uh, his defensive lineman, Sam Hubbard, return a, t return a fumble 99 <laughs> yards for a touchdown because he's cool. Yeah. He inspires, <laughs> his <defense. laughs> he inspires his defense to be better. He Josh inspires Allen. his defense where in the overtime of their playoff game, Patrick Joe Mahomes throws cool, an man. interception versus when Josh Allen threw a go-ahead touchdown pass to put them ahead by three with three. 13 seconds left and never gets the ball back. Josh Allen just can't motivate his defense like uh, that. Jack Sucks. Jack, He's awful. Jack Stark. He's Baker cool. Mayfield has 10 touchdowns and three picks in half the playoff games of Josh Allen. Well, it's funny you bring up Baker Mayfield. Baker let's Mayfield go, let's doesn't go to, have 10 touchdowns let's go to and three picks down. in the playoffs. Stop it. All right, fourth down. Baker Mayfield. <laughs> Baker Mayfield didn't get tagged. The Athletics said he could be in the four for 160 million range. Huh? No. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Does that make sense? I, I mean, he had a great kind of, year. He did have a great year. One season. But he also and had Mike Evans. He did. But, and he will again if they sign him. Yeah. See, like, here's the deal with this, which that, that stunned me when I read that. Absolutely stunned me. Like, this isn't, um, you know, Sam Flannel uh, reporting this. You know, like, this is The Athletic. Yeah. And I, I did a double take, but then this is where the Daniel Jones thing comes into play. You know, it, it just does. That's the market. And th by the way, this is going to be a running theme throughout the rest of the nickel packages. When we get to the NFC North, when we get to uh, some of the quarterback questions and things like that, it's a supply and demand field, Flannel. It well, just is. I mean, and for the record, I did fact check it. Baker Mayfield does have 10 touchdowns and three picks in his playoff career. So I'm sorry for doubting whoever that was. You win that one, I lose. But yes, <laughs> Baker Mayfield... God, it's so tough because in so many years, he has underperformed. Yeah. I mean, you look at 
that year after his rookie year, 2019, with the Freddie Kitchens year, he threw like 21 interceptions. The year where he played hurt and the Cleveland Browns missed the playoffs despite having Super Bowl aspirations. And of course, what he did with uh, Carolina. You just, I don't trust him, but at the same time, he did have a very unexpected good year. Yeah. I can't even deny that. I, I've Baker always Mayfield liked him. Agree. They uh, were supposed to be a top five I don't, I, pick. I, I, I've always liked Flavio Baker Mayfield. Baker I Mayfield. hate Baker Mayfield. No, like not, you know, not like he's an elite QB in the NFL. I would play for Baker Mayfield. He's a guy you fall into a foxhole for 100%. sure. 100%. Yeah. No, Baker yeah. Mayfield just has little man syndrome. He's not a good leader. Baker, Ma Baker Mayfield has Spenny vibe. I'd follow Spenny. Mm -hmm. I'd rumble in the streets of Royal Oak with Spenny. Appreciate that. Like, I would go into a bar up north. I'm talking, like, up north. Up north, up north. Up yeah. north. Trucks where, only. Where you're not welcome when yeah. you walk in the door. Yeah. The kind of place the music stops. Yeah. And they've been looking for an excuse. And oh, as yeah. the evening rolls on, you're back in the back of the bar there. And you know that the whole temperament of the room has changed, mm -hmm. and they're looking for you. <laughs> Sounds and, like a movie. And you got to go back to back and just fight your way to the front door and oh, run yeah. for the hills, man. Oh, yeah. And that's that's how I kind of feel about Maker Mayfield, though. I, I've always liked him as a person, yeah. as a competitor. Uh, I, I can't stand him. You say a four for He's not quarterback, Eel. He four ran for from 160. The he did Four run for 160. From the so that's he got, roughly he got Daniel Jones' money. Exactly. Yeah, that's roughly 40 million a year. Yeah. If we signed Jared Goff to that, we'd be having a field day. Um, I mean, it seems on par because we want to get Goff for what 45 million. That's a that's about right. That's that's the talk in the streets, I, and um, I think that's that's about right though. It's all when you break it down, Clarence Crystal, you lose. Good day, sir. All right, <laughs> we're, we're gonna get through it. Only took two segments to do one nickel package, yep. but right. here we go. Fifth down. Fifth down. Fifth question of the nickel package. Josh Allen and Brian Burns were the biggest losers in the franchise tag period. Montez Sweat. In on a four by ninety eight million dollar deal, and Allen and Burns are only one for twenty four million tag deal. It sucks for them, huh? When you look at it that way, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, but like one million for or one year for twenty four million. I can't say that sucks. It sucks if you get hurt. It does suck if you get hurt. And if you, it, it sucks that you don't have security. Mm -hmm. And it just does, man. Guardian alarm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, that's... when you boil it all down, like, I know uh, Sweat's, I think, what, 55 or 53, something like that's guaranteed, but still. Yeah. All Burns and Allen, who are the elite of the elite, all they're sitting on right now is $24 million guaranteed. All that's I know it. is another reason why he's the GOAT. Spartan dog Kirk Cousins yeah. fought the tag twice and yeah. won and, and beat then the got the most guaranteed money ever. Right. Beat the tag up. <laughs> Legend. He beat the tag up. You like that? Up, up, up. Uh, Flannel, your thoughts? No, um, it really sucks for Brian Burns because he's in Carolina hell for another year. But uh, oh, yeah. what are yeah. they? Why aren't they trading him? I, don't, I have no idea. I, they, they're, they have no future right now. Yeah. None whatsoever. Even if Brian Burns is Defensive Player of the Year next year, they're not doing shit. At least with Josh Allen, you can see a pathway to him being a major factor in a Jacksonville Jaguars team that uh, that has a resurgent season. I see why they did it because they need him. But uh, Brian Burns, he's just toiling away in hell right now. And Montez Sweat, he's very, very well set up for the future. I can relate sitting on this desk. Tell him about Swiss Insurance. Swiss Insurance. I'm kidding, Flannel. I know, I know. Well, <laughs> Am I? Ah, I've got the good news You're or the flannel. bad news. You're the man, Spenny. The bad news is insurance rates are going up across the board in Michigan. The good news is Swiss Insurance is here to help. Right now, more than ever, it's critical for you to have your insurance reviewed. Swiss will make sure your carrier does not slip in extra fees or raise deductibles. Call Mark at Swiss Insurance today or visit SwissINS.com. Tell them Woodward Sports send you. Give them a call at 248-800-4177. Again, that is 248-800-4177, Swiss Insurance. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. 
Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Football season's over, but it's starting again already. And spring training is underway. That's right, it's El Mago season. But it's always Jack Labrador season, 24-7, 365. Learn how to play right now on your phone. Go to jacklabrador.gg or scan the QR code on your screen. Two new symbols and a franchise-changing three-point play. Remember, once you go Jack, you never go back. The car game that's sweeping the nation. Go to jacklabador.gg. Wow, pulling up on the second hour of the show already, huh? Time flies when you having fun. It, we are yeah, having, having fun blast. here. Are you Flannel? Yes. <laughs> I am. I know I am. Neil Rule, <laughs> Sam Flannel in for DMAC. Flannel will be in for me on uh, Monday and probably Tuesday. Sounds good. Golden Grizzlies, of course, going to Indianapolis for the Horizon League semifinals and hopefully finals and try to sneak into uh march madness and yeah. then draw duke and beat duke let's go sport coat new <laughs> that's right yeah. who are you guys I'll playing be- the next round of the horizon league tournament? uh cleveland state nice easy work norris cole's on the mark. yeah <clears throat> norris shout out cole. Cole. Shout out norris he played cole. a role in a couple heat championships he, he did. did i did not like him as a player though but yeah he did he did kg in the house spencer rackster racks on racks on racks it is a nickel package friday all right, hey, let's do this one. NFC North, Nick. You know what? Let's do this. Let's do the NCA one and do the NFC North in the next segment. All How about right, that? Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll tease it for the people. That works for me. It's a good I'll... NFC North nickel package, it by the way. It is a good NFC yeah. North nickel yeah. package. First question of the NCAA nickel package. They're talking about changing the format of the playoff for the format. Oh. They're trying to change the format of the playoff that we haven't even played yet. Is this getting stupid already? Yes, it is. Uh, by the way, in the chat, uh, Detroit Sports T, Kirk Cousins is a money get mother. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yes, he is. He's he is. Back, he is <clears throat> no. Um, yes, it is. Getting, is anybody else like getting that vibe that this thing's getting stupid already? That yeah. we're changing it? We haven't even played it yet. Yeah, they're trying to open it to sixteen now. <laughs> They're doing like they're they're trying to figure out like the format, mm-hmm. and it's just we'll we'll have more on that in second down. But flannel, does, does, look, I know we like things the way we like things, and we don't like change. Like as a nation, yeah. we're resistant to change. But flannel, this seems like it's getting kind of stupid. Well, that's it? the point. We've never even seen the twelve team playoff in action, and we're right. already trying to expand it. I agree one hundred percent. I think, and I want to see it in action first. That twelve does seem like the sweet spot. Yes, the and I'm looking. Number. I'm looking forward to seeing it like that. But if I have to see that for a year or two, and then it go to sixteen, it's kind of like when the NFL will eventually go to 18 regular season games. Everything is just so overinflated at this point. Leave it at 12. Let it at least play out for a season or yeah. two first before you even talk about expanding it. Might as well just let the whole t- top 25 in if that's right. the case. Like, seriously. Just let it all in. Uh, Dante151 had an answer about the whole Brian Burns thing. Carolina thinks they can get a King's ransom for teams asking for Brian Burns, which I think Carolina is stupid to think that. Well, Dante, you know what that is real quick? This is... We see this is called time decay. It's it's a phrase I use all the time. Yeah. Every second you keep him, his value goes down like because you, because you get closer to the end. It's like the Tigers with Michael Fulmer. I would have traded him the second he won Rookie of the Year. Yeah. Every second you kept him, his value went down until it went down to nothing. A lot to hate for college football too in yeah. the chat, which is which makes me so sad, man. I'm excited for college football next yeah, year, man. I, but Mormon th- power, baby. <laughs> but d- does this playoff thing, though, Spenny, is it turning you off a little bit? Because I'm no. not going to lie to you. I am. I'm the biggest college football guy at this network. I promise you, I yes, am. Yes, you are. And I, I don't like the vibes I'm getting from it, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm cool with it. You know, if I go to 16 teams, 16 teams, that works for me. It's just an easier chance for state to get in. But <laughs> um, yeah, I, more. I think more college football playoff games is better in my eyes. Uh, Ace Breezy. Sam adds a different personality type and perspective that helps make the show more interesting. He's a weird guy, but the dude's cool with me. <laughs> Thank which you. Ace Breezy tells me 
you're probably a weird guy too. No, I'm just playing with Flannel's it. Flannel's the man. Appreciate, appreciate you tapping. Yeah, I, I do. That. I do like yeah. flannel. Yeah. Speak. Oh, listen. Listen to this from Easy. Burns is a declining asset. I have permeated this entire network. Yeah. <laughs> My vernacular is just is being spread around Woodward, and I love it. I'm a proud father. It's All right. true. Second down. All right, next question of the nickel package. Part of the new proposed playoff is the Big Ten and SEC demanding they get three guaranteed spots each. Even if the Big Ten fans here, can we all agree that that's dumb or no? I think so. I think it makes sense. Three guaranteed spots in the playoff? Yes. Yeah. The Big Ten and the SEC would get three. The Big 12 would get two. And the ACC I'm, would get two. They're the two most dominant conferences. Yeah. I'm not – I wouldn't be mad at that. What do you – the Big Ten and the SEC? Well, the Pac-12 was the most dominant conference last but year. But it's going yeah. to be when the Pac-12. But it will yeah. be. Yeah. Will That's be what I mean, SEC. like going yeah. forward. But yeah. but. I don't know. I, I think it should be, you know, if you're a good team, you get in. Yeah. That's, now, now, I know that'll yeah. be massage because I, I, yeah. I pointed this out to you guys, like how the ranking thing works. Remember what I, I, I feel like I turned a light on for you, Flannel, when I, when I gave you the outline, the blueprint for the Penn State effect. Yeah, sure. Where once they get to 10, they can lose and they never go down <laughs> because they're the third Big Ten team. So they have to stay there for television's sake. That's true. I just I don't need to see and look. I know that Washington and Oregon are coming in. Mm -hmm. I don't. Washington just lost their coach. You know what I'm saying? Like we've seen them rise up and yeah. then lose to Montana at home. You know that yeah. did happen a couple years ago. A lot worse than they were. Before. UCLA yeah. is basically trash. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I know that everybody thinks this is going to be some grand thing, and I just don't think that it is. And if you go by the numbers, if you look at it. The third team, if you did this third Big Ten team, it would have been Penn State who got murdered by Ole Miss in their bowl game. Absolutely. And everybody played. Yeah. I don't need to see Penn State or the threat of Iowa being in the playoff just based on we get three spots. I hate that. Well, here's the thing, though. You're going to see Penn State in the playoff even if they do exactly what they did last year. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 that's, and that's the thing. By the by, the twelve team playoff formula. If you're a ten and two team and your only losses are to Michigan and Ohio State, you're probably going to get in anyway. They're going to lose yeah. to Michigan State too. Hey, they could. Mormon, they could. Mormon Power, Aiden Childs. <laughs> no, they could. Bringing it back. They very much could. Yeah. Michigan Honestly, State always plays Penn State well. It's they do. This last year, not every, every year. I feel yeah. like they do. And but, let's yeah. go. Red Wings party says ten through sixteen will just be mid Big Ten teams and SEC teams. And, and I and I agree with you. I, I 100% agree yeah. with you. And that's where I don't want to see the the Big 12, you know, that, that third good team in the Big 12. They're going to get passed over. They just are. Yeah. And, again, I, I just I hate that one conference. Because you know what you're doing with that, too? That is guaranteed revenue that you get three shares of and everybody mm -hmm. else only gets two. I mean, so you're widening the gap. The other Going forward, the other conferences are dissolving, though. Yeah. Uh, in the next 10 years, you think it'll be a Big 12 in 10 yeah, years? Yeah, who's even going to be in the Big 12 Yeah, year? like, come on. Like, Oklahoma and Texas are both gone. Right. Just so the future, it's going to be, what, Kansas State? It, it, like, then just cut the shit. And break away. That's what I've been saying. That's, and say yeah. and say we're a super league. Yeah, they like that's they it. should. They but should. I thought people don't like that. Remember when soccer talked about yeah. doing that and people had a revolt. Yeah, that is true. I people thought you. I thought out. you didn't like that. Well, college football is different. Yeah, okay. they'll accept it, especially it's in this day and age. In college football, in this day and age, they they'll accept it. Okay. All right, next question of the NCAA nickel package. Fox said that they are going to broadcast the national game every Friday night. There will be. From the Big Ten, Big Twelve, or Mountain West. Do you guys like that? You know I like it. I love yeah. it. Friday night football. Friday night lights. Hell Come yeah. on. Uh for the week the Mountain West are in there. Hundred yeah. percent I like that. <laughs> yeah, if, if it's Rutgers, Iowa. But see, that's flannel. <laughs> that's what it's gonna end up being, man. Right. You know it is. You know right. it's gonna be Illinois and Wisconsin in Champaign on a yeah. Friday night. You know it is. I don't need that. That's and fact. flannel, look, man, I'm serious about this too. Like don't don't give me this promise of a national Friday night game and then present me with Wisconsin and Illinois in Champaign. No one wants that. No one needs that. And I'll tell you this too. Like people, people are being critical of fans because they're not showing up in the numbers that they used to show up. What you you, you you're gonna tell me that like Joe Illinois fan that works his regular job, 
You want him to like pack up on a Friday night and get everything together and bust out there to the stadium? It's not going to happen yeah, that way. That's true. It's yeah. not going to happen. I, I mean, Illinois has given us Jershon Newton, Devon Witherspoon, Kirby Joseph, Chase, and Sidney Brown. Yeah, the they also give years. us Brent Bielema as the coach. Fair. <laughs> that's 100% fair. I'm just saying that Illinois, if they, they've had some exciting. I would still. It's one of those things that I would maybe watch while I pregame or something like that. Have it on in the background and maybe with it on on the TV and it muted in music. That's probably with the Friday if, if the, with those particular games. That's fair. I, do you like it, Spencer? I like it, but you I like, know this is what you're. So you're telling me I like it in, on paper, but like you said, yeah. When we, when we get Rutgers, Maryland, so USC is like, going to play at home on Friday night. No, not yeah. a chance. Michigan's at, not going to play at home on Friday night. Ohio State's not going to play at home on Friday night. It's not. You know, it's like you said. It's going to be Maryland, Minnesota. Yeah, and, I can see no that. one needs I can, it. Yeah. I need less of that, not more. Yeah, yeah. Take, I need less of that. Take it up with the networks. This is money, man. Yeah, take it up with the networks. Yeah. All Sorry. right, uh, last question of the NCAA nickel package, and we'll look at flannel with this one. What do Michigan fans expect for next year? All right, do you have a starting a quarterback question. yet? That's an honest question. No, we do not. Okay. We, we 100% do not. But uh, my expectation, and this is just me looking at the schedule, two losses. A two-loss regular season and maybe fighting for a last playoff spot. Here's the reality. They Man, lost... Child. They lost a shit ton on offense. They're pretty much just bringing back Donovan Edwards and Colston Loveland. They got a good defense returning. Guys like, you know, Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant, Derek Moore, um, Rod Moore, Will Johnson. Yeah. I think the defense is going to be fine. But offensively, until they find a quarterback, it's How might be a little How the transfer bit... portal looked like to sure up that offensive line without I'm, Harbaugh? I mean, it's 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 uh, lacking at this point. I'll okay. just say that. No, just say it's thin. I'm honestly yeah. asking because I don't No, no, and, and I, I appreciate that question. I just think they got Texas at home. They got USC at home. They got Oregon at home. Washington on the road isn't going to be tough. Isn't going to be as tough. Of course, it's not going to be as tough. And Ohio State at on the road, that's that's going to be tough as well. I think they're going to lose two regular season games. Sharon Moore is being set up to fail, man. No, because he's being set up. I would say flannel, that. flannel. <sighs> he's going to be sick when, when, sure. when they when they go six and six. Yeah. If they go six and six, and then they chase that with an eight and four the next year, you know how it's going to work. See, you know how it is. See, but it would take something like that. Six and six, and that's understandable. I think that they're set up to go like 10 and two, and I yeah. think the fan base would be fine with it considering they're coming off a national championship. And oh, by the way, 10 and two might get you into the college football playoff. Ain't no it might, might about it. It, it sure, will. sure. And yeah, you know what? 10 and 2 Michigan is going to be yeah, in the playoff yeah, for sure. Fair, it will. fair enough. I think they can do it. Yeah, I can't see 6 and 6. Eight That's a trials. stretch. Oh, I mean, we just we just shuffled through oh, some no, of the games that are on the schedule. I, I love what Jonathan Smith, Jonathan Smith is doing at Michigan State in the transfer portal and in the recruiting class. I wouldn't be surprised. Sam wouldn't be surprised. Uh, here, come, here comes the, uh, the Neil. Hey, here comes Neil with the I expect more than you. Um, Mike G. Neil, Sharon is good. Leave the brother alone. And But Mike G., that's going to be part of the problem. Low key. It is. And KG, you know this, man. Like, he's he's going to get a little less time to work with than other people might. I'm just going to say it that well, way. Yeah. That's I the cult. That. You know what I'm saying? Like that. that. You know what I'm talking about when I say that. Watch the Fab Five documentary if, if you're wondering where, where I'm getting that from. Well, but in fairness, Watch it. comparing him to Jim Harbaugh, which was the literal, like, home run hire of home run hires, it's... Of course, he's going to get a little less leeway, but I think as long as just this season they have, even if they go nine and three, I think the fan base will be fine. So because he gets we're five up. years instead of seven. I mean, five years sounds yeah. like a pretty good amount, honestly. Shit, they gave I, a struggling hardball damn near ten years. Seven he years, finally got yeah. it done, but it took him a while. So I just worry he's not going to get a fair shake. And I feel that. I do feel that. Yeah, I, I do. I, I I honestly believe that too. And yeah. <laughs> Because it, it's he's gonna walk it he's walking into the schedule this year it's yeah. gonna it's gonna be tough man I believe it's that. gonna be really yeah, tough. Hey, hey, yeah. Texas. Hey, but Texas lost their two wide receivers, their yeah. two defensive tackles, their running back. USC I mean, lost Caleb. Like, yeah. I'm not saying they're not bringing back good players. I'm just saying that's gonna matter. I don't think Quinn Ewers is as well set up to succeed this year as last. Remember year. what happened the last time you doubted Texas flannel? <laughs> <laughs> hey, fair, fair. You win. I lose. <laughs> Going back to uh, our old, like, for the love of college football days. Welcome Remember those boys. days? Yep. Um, yeah. Real quick, Flannel, I know we're, we're late for the break, yeah. and I know what this is going to open up, but, and I understand that going in, but, you know, whatever. Um, when, can, when can I ask the question, though, right? Because, like, if, if you guys are a dynasty, like a football dynasty or a dominant program, 
what what do you need to do if you just reload, right? So so you're you're admitting right now it's harder to do that. It's going to be a step back, coach. right? Well, just with everything we lost, 18 players to the combine, it's hard for any program to overcome yeah. that and be a national champion again. I'm yeah, not yeah, saying yeah, it's. I know, but Alabama and LSU had a play one time where there were 20 NFL guys on the field. And they they continued to keep it pushing. Fine. You know and what I'm saying? Michigan's going to have a lot this year. It's just there's questions about the quarterback position, and that's huge. I don't know if, like, for example, Alex Orgy is an every-down quarterback. Orgy in the end zone. He'll have yeah. a lot of those, but as far as a thrower goes, we just don't know. He okay, could so be a Jalen Hurts-esque guy. He could. You know, the he could be Jalen Milrow. You know? yeah. Yeah, he All could right, be. so we're, we're on civil terms for now about dude, it then. Yeah. yeah, civil terms for now about yeah. it. All right, Planet Fitness, home of the Planet Fitness studio here at Woodward Sports. I was just there getting that Friday in. Little 5K. The, the heavy lifting had been done. Did some lifting, the 5K. I try to keep it calm on a Friday. It's been where are you at tonight? Uh, oh, you're I'm off, off, right? Friday. Yeah. Off Friday. Tomorrow is legs and core. All right. I do the Saturday, son. I take the weekend off. That's how I operate. But you can do whatever you want at Planet Fitness. Dollar down. $24.99 a month for a black card membership. There's over 2,500 Planet Fitnesses in the world. With a black card, you can go inside any one of them. Get your work in wherever you are in the nation. There's over 50 in Metro Detroit alone. Unlimited use of all the amenities, the tanning bed, the hydro massage. Bring out all the guests you want. Planet Fitness, you basically own the place. It's the best gym in the gym game, guys. I'll never be a member at another gym. I'm Team Planet Fitness forever. Forever, ever, forever, forever ever. ever. Yes, I am, because that's how I roll. I love me my Planet Fitness Black Card membership. Go to planetfitness.com, pull in the parking lot, join there. It's Planet Fitness, where your fitness is essential. Big Boy Seafood Fest is sailing in with a fresh catch of favorites. Dive into fish and chips, our new palm crusted cod, perfectly fried clam shrimp platter, or a delicious fish sandwich. Try our new mango ice tea, the ultimate compliment to our popcorn shrimp, our all new fried pickles, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Experience all the sea has to offer every Friday night with our all you can eat seafood buffet. Every day is a fish fry, only at Big Boy. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here, and we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party, it's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans, starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss. With Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Neil Rule here for Feldman Automotive. That's right, since 1996. Feldman Automotive has been driven to provide right a fast, here. convenient, first-class car buying experience called the Feldman Advantage. There's 18 Feldman Automotive dealerships all across different brands as well. It's not just Chevy. There's Ford. There's Kia. Whatever car you want, go to FeldmanAuto.com. Find out which one of the Feldman Automotive dealerships works best for you. And don't forget, we're live at Feldman Chevrolet in Novi every other Monday where you can catch Woodward Sports Network. We'll be out there broadcasting live. It's Feldman Automotive. We'll see my people. Keeping a push in here on a nickel package of Friday. Legend was bought in, brought into this world in 1996. That's right. It's Only the year. goats. Yep. Only the goats. Um, we ran really late on that segment. Yeah, we did. Like really super late. That's it. Do you want to do the five for fighting, then do the NFC North? Yeah, we can. You do want that. to do it that way? Sure. Everybody, we'll. Uh, We'll do that, because I did just get the question, will Steve Eiserman make a move? That is question number one All on right. the five for fighting. Trade deadline is today. Will Stevie Y make a move? Yeah, I Define move. Like, are you will talking bring about... bring someone in? Bring someone in. From another team? Um, no, I don't think so. I think anything that he does, like, will be clearing... I think that's going to be the play. I think Edmondson... Does Edmondson count as bringing somebody in? From another team. No. Yeah. 
That's, I think that's going to be the move. If he can, sh- I'll consider this trade deadline a monumental success. If if he can get rid of Hull, if he can get rid of him, move that salary off the books. We're paying him what three and a half yeah. to sit in the press box. As yeah. somebody said earlier this yeah. week, yeah. if you can find a way to move that, then you're a goat. You're no. an absolute goat. I agree with that. Get rid of Hull. Maybe bring up Edmondson. See if uh, yes, yes. I mean, see if he could uh, help solidify the uh, defense a little bit more, which has struggled as a whole this year. Hey. Shout out. Bring Shout home. out. Shout Bring out. Bring him home. Bring him home. I'm cool with it. Yeah. So, so I, no, my answer is no. Yeah, it, yeah. But that's a win to me. Sure. That's a win yeah. because, look, I've always talked about this before. I, a good executive will recognize they made a mistake and move on from it. That's why I always gave Joe Dumars credit when he drafted Mateen Cleaves. Yeah. <laughs> He got John Barry and a first-round pick from a team Cleve. Smart man. That's GOAT status right there. Yeah. That is impressive. Oh, yeah. you oh, know, yeah. I think Steve Eisman would tell you, was, was Hull a mistake? Yes. yes. Yeah. I think we can all agree it is, yeah. right? So if he yeah. can fix it, even if it's like eating you know, Justin Abdelkader m- money, Hell yeah. a million a year. Spartan dog. Yeah. Because we're paying him a million a year until 2026, everybody. All right, when second period. Spartan dog, get your bag. Next question, second minute of the fighting major. Are you worried about Tampa Bay after the trade they made? I, I'm they not. brought the Duke in. You know, no, like, I'm not getting good vibes from Tampa Bay. Yeah. As someone who has Vasilevsky on their fantasy team, <laughs> who's been monumentally disappointed with him this year. Yeah, he's not been great. They lost again to Calgary yesterday yeah. at home, gave up six to the Flames. Like we we're talking about how this is like a two horse or a two spot race for three teams. What if I told you Tampa's going to be the one out? Ooh. I wouldn't be surprised because that's what I'm feeling right yeah, now. Yeah, the for Islanders real. are more they're, they're hotter. They and won they five the, in a row, and they have the better goalie, which is crazy to say. That's what that, you see. What I'm saying, like you're putting logs on the fire yeah. right here. Yeah, I mean, when Vasilevsky goes from arguably the greatest goalie ever to mid or less than mid, it's gonna hurt. It's, it's gonna hurt Tampa Bay. Obviously, Nikita Kucherov is having one of the best years of his career. But, Sergeyev uh, going down was big yeah, for them too. Yeah, That's yeah. true. Sure. As of right now, I'm more worried about the Islanders just because. I still think when it's all said and done, it's gonna be Tampa and Detroit that get the two wild card spots. I just I, I can't see. I cannot fathom the Islanders catching us, but still, they're the ones that I'm worried about for now. You got to beat them when you play them head to head at home in a couple weeks or so. For sure, for sure, need that win. Third yep. minute of the fighting major. Who would you rather see in the playoffs? God, this is sad. The <laughs> Rangers or the Florida Panthers? I I gotta say the rain. I want no part. I don't want to see playoff Truba though. That guy's gonna kill someone. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just want no part of the Florida Panthers. I'm not interested in what they have to offer. I don't I don't want them to break us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. They destroyed us the other day they did. here. If we played the Panthers, I would just be happy. To win, to, one to game. win a period, yeah. you know, like I, I would, ju- I would be ecstatic. Like if somebody said, "Hey, you're going to play the Panthers. I'll give you a four-one loss in the series." Oh, I'll break your arm, shaking your <laughs> hand. You know what I'm saying? The Rangers, I, I, I would expect to win a game against the Rangers. That's fair. I would go Rangers as well because I think the Florida Panthers are the best team in the East. And honestly, I would like to see the Detroit New York matchup. Selfishly, I think that'd be a little bit more fun. And also, that would be cool. I think the bottom line is. If the Red Wings made the playoffs and got swept by either of those teams, even if they got outscored something like 16-4, to four, still a wildly successful season. I'm not worried about beating either of those teams because I don't think it's going to happen. No, yeah. I would just like to win a game no. just so you can put your, your hat on the shelf and say, hey, we won a game. Yeah. That's fair, but it's still a successful season just if they make it, to the, me at least. Those two teams are the kryptonite for the Detroit Red Wings, unfortunately, with how physical they play, how aggressive they are, and like... Like I said, Truba is going to destroy our forwards. Like, he's going to kill one of our forwards if we play them. And the only upside is we'll get Clem Cost in playoff minutes if we play the Rangers. Hey. <laughs> so, hey, we, we can see that one. We'll send him out there against Rempe. It won't happen because it never happens in the NHL like this. But I, I would lock into Panthers Rangers. Yeah. Oh, in in, in the conference finals. That would be the, I, yeah. I, I, I would lock into that. That would be better than the Stanley Cup finals. I, I would agree. Yeah. I, I want that. As a, as a hockey guy, I definitely would want that. Uh, let's go Red Wing Sparty. Rangers, I guess. God. Yeah. <laughs> Panthers Rangers would be such a physical series, yeah. man. That would be so And high awesome. level, too. Yeah. And high. It could be like a physical 4 yeah, 3. Because is still a monster, too. Yep. Oh, man. Man, the Rangers are so good too. All right, next question. Next fourth minute of the fighting major. More important to re-sign this year: Patrick Kane 
or David Perron and Joe Valeno. Because I'm not just doing one, one, and one. Because if you do one, yeah. one, one, it's obviously it's Patrick obvious. Kane. How old's Perron again? Uh, he's north of 30, he right? Is. I think he's mid 30s. Do you think PK can keep 35. his level of play going? Perron's 35. Yes. And, and under your scenario, we lose them both, right? Yes. Damn. Mm. That's that's the greatest question that's ever been asked in the history of a nickel package before. I do what I can. I don't have a feel for that. I know what the people are going to say. It's going to be a Kane slap fest. Yeah. Well, because it should be at this point. Because Patrick Kane is playing like like a superstar right now. He's playing by the numbers at a level similar to his Blackhawk days. And yeah. he's doing it for us. And he's been very, very Yeah, impactful. but you got to remember, if Perron was, had Kane's spot on the power play before Kane got here. Sure. And it was still pretty good. And he was good. Yeah. And then he had to slide down to the number two role. I would contend that on the power play, which is what I'm about. And maybe I overvalue it. I'll come clean on that. That Param would come in the neighborhood of replacing his production. In, in the, the neighborhood. Sure, in, in the neighborhood. Wouldn't, wouldn't outproduce him or anything no, like no. that. And if you put Valeno out there, to, you see what I'm saying here? Like a two for one? Well, and Valeno also played the one C when, uh, when Dylan Larkin was out. Dylan Larkin, over the course of his career, has proven to be durable. But uh, it showed me something. And it also showed me, obviously, they didn't want to break up the second line. But uh, Yeah, I like that line's chemistry a lot. Yeah, that's, that, that's fair. So I would still probably go Patrick Kane. But uh, shout out, too, to Joe Valeno for having the best season of his career, He's having a great too. year. He is, absolutely. No, he, yeah, he is. And uh, who farted brings up a good point. Kane and Perron are only short-term guys. Valeno is long-term. So that, that's got a fact. That's a great question. Valeno's uh, also one of your best PK guys. Yep. Like. BD, uh, BD3 said that's a tough question. That's the greatest question. That's the greatest question that's ever been asked in the history of the nickel package. Phenomenal well done. Question. Well I do done. What I, can. I do what I can. I appreciate it. All right, final minute of the fighting major. Are you confident in Alex Lyon going into the playoffs? I, yeah. Like, you have to be, right? I, here's, I've never felt the way that I felt about a player in a 7-2 to two loss that I felt about Alex Lyon. That man was thrown to the wolves He's making some nasty on saves. that night. Yeah. There is not a goalie alive. That would have played as well as he played in that. They left him out to dry. And yeah. it's, it was ugly. It, and I, I walked away with more confidence in him, Flannel. I did. As weird as that sounds. In a game, he got chased. <laughs> in a game, thank God he got chased, by the way, because he didn't deserve to have all those goals on, on his name. And they were they, obviously, you had uh, Miko Rantanen and Kale Bacar and Nathan McKinnon. They just kept coming. But oh, anyway, my God. Yes, I, I know. That playoff unit yeah. or that power play unit for Colorado yeah. is so crazy. But uh, I would say, given the context of I want to see the Red Wings in the playoffs but don't expect too much when they get there, yes, I trust Alex Lyon to help the Red Wings hold on to that spot because he has played well this year. Yeah, I love Alex Lyon. He has. I love Premier Pet Supply. I love Premier Pet Supply, too, and so should you because Premier Pet Supply is hands down Michigan's best pet store. Same prices in all the conveniences of the online and big box retailers. With one major difference, they're family and locally owned and operated for 30 plus years. Over 60 brands of food with nutrition experts to help you. Same day local curbside home delivery. Premier Pet Supply. Give your pet the best. www.premierpetsupply.com At work and at home. We're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here, and we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party, it's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans, starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Shots, shots, shots. 
Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights. Live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> What happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand and offer more products to more people. This is exactly what Les Stanford did by adding Les Stanford Buick GMC, the same great service that customers have come to know and trust. On Woodward Avenue, just south of Nine Mile, check out Les Stanford in Dearborn today at lesstanford.com. Les Stanford Chevrolet, together, let's drive. All right, keeping it pushing here. Nickel Package Friday. Neil Rule, Sam Flannel in for DMAC. We got the Rocks, KG and Spencer Racks on Racks on Racks. Uh, check out the heavyweights, by the way. Five to seven. Check Shout it out. out. Shout yeah. out. Shout out heavyweights. All right. Nickel Package. We've been promising this one. This is a good one. I enjoy it. It is the NFC North Nickel Package. And guys, just as a heads up, this is going to be a thing. Like, we need to keep tabs on what's going on around us in yes. this division. NFC North very well could be one of, if not the best division in football next Business year. Business is mm-hmm. picking up yeah, in the NFC. Yesterday's prices Mm-mm. are not today's prices. Not. The price of an NFC North brick has gone up. It has. All bricks. White, White tan, tan bricks. bricks. All right. It's true. KG, right. I got bars. Bro. First, you question, do it for days. first question of the <laughs> NFC North nickel package. Bears. What do you expect the return would be if they traded when they trade Justin Fields? Because it's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. You think so? Yes. Um, I, I mean, like I said, I, I made my piece that I think I like Justin Fields, and I think that right now they'd be a better team if they kept Justin Fields, but they're better in the future getting Caleb Williams for sure. So here's the deal. Um, I think at the end, what did we talk about with quarterbacks earlier? My favorite, supply and demand. Yeah. yeah. Supply and demand makes a market. It's really not a big quarterback market this year. And what does that mean? It means he's going to go for less than what he's what he should. Well, no, because like yeah. it all of a sudden, like out of nowhere, we're talking about Baker Mayfield getting yeah, 40 about to say, for know. four years. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like you're getting fields with another year of control. I think his value goes up. Yeah. Because if you're desperate, like, mm-hmm. what are these teams going to do? What's Minnesota going to do? More on them later. Right. But, like, that that's how you have to look at this. you got to look at this kind of long term because I know people will say, like, the real K. Collins says fourth or fifth round. No chance. No way. No yeah. chance. That's yeah. why I told second, you. They- second minimum, if someone's desperate enough, mm-hmm. a future first. Yes. I told fourth you they will fifth, get a first for Justin Fields. I, it I might not be in this draft. Yeah, but exactly. I, but it'll be next year, though. Absolutely. I'm – Hey, you I'm pair, with you. You pair Justin Fields with a, with the right offensive coordinator that can maybe unlock his game. The the bottom line saying. is like you can hate on the way he throws the ball, Flannel. He is an elite runner he in is. the NFL. Elite. And if you have an elite trait, a coordinator can work with that. I just rather have an elite trait at throwing the ball. <laughs> because well, I mean, of course. No, I'm, I, no. But honestly, if you're the Atlanta Falcons, if you're the Minnesota Vikings, if you're the uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and you don't get Russ, for example, Justin Fields seems like an attractive option. Fields on the Steelers would be dope. Sure, hundred yeah. percent. So uh, yeah, I expect uh, future first, second. I don't hate it. I'm yeah. not a huge fan of him as a quarterback, but I could see how a team would be excited to get him, one that's in quarterback hell right now. And that's what I'm saying, yeah. man. Like, desperation. The mm-hmm. quarterback spot creates desperation unlike any other spot. Mm-hmm. Hey, the Falcons, and this, it's not just any pick. This is the first pick yep. in the draft. So, Yep. I mean, the Falcons might have been a playoff team with a quarterback better than Desmond Ritter. The Falcons would have definitely been a playoff team if they had Justin Fields last year. I agree with that. Yeah, hundred percent. I That's agree fair. with that. In and, that division, sure. And if the 49ers drafted Justin Fields instead of Trey Lance, they would have won a Super Bowl. I guarantee. That, you. I, I, I believe that. That's disrespectful to Brock Purdy. With Kyle Shit. No, it's not. Justin yes. Fields is better than Brock Purdy. That's lunacy. How can you say that right now? Because Ooh, this look, look at what he's dealing with. You, you, Eberflus or Kyle yeah. Shanahan. He that's hasn't all been I done any Kyle favors. Shanahan by a country mile, especially offensively. I understand that. It's just Justin Fields has not shown anything as a passer, but people want to just like anoint him like he's going to be good someday. I needed yeah. to see more last year, and I didn't. If you put Justin Fields in the Kyle Shanahan system with pieces like, oh, I don't know, Christian McCaffrey, Brandon Ayoke, Debo Samuel, and George Kittle, he is going to be yeah, a good Justin passer. Justin Fields will be Especially a better passer. Especially when you that. have Kyle Shanahan calling the plays for him. 
It's Jimmy Garoppolo looked like a top 10 quarterback in that system, yeah. and he is dirt trash. Right. Justin Fields is better than Jimmy G. I just don't think he's, you can say he's better than Brock Purdy at this point. Because yeah. Brock Purdy had two, like one really, really good year in a row, and then, of course, the year before, like half the season. I just, I want to see more from Justin Fields before I'm ready to say that he's de- well, definitively no, no, worse. No, but nobody's saying, like, he's a goat or anything like that. I'm yeah. saying you can win games in the NFL, and he's got an elite trait. I mean, did, elite. If you give, if you give Kyle Shanahan a guy like Justin Fields, he would make work yeah. wonders with him. If Brock Purdy in that system is being a MVP talked about guy, imagine a guy like Justin Fields who has electric athletic abilities in that system. Yeah. Oh, he's got electric athletic abilities. I just don't think he can. He's ever going to throw as well as Purdy did. I, don't I really know. don't. I really don't he, believe so. He he's, get a better offensive line and another receiver. I mean. Who knows? Yeah, they haven't I mean, done it their in entire favors. offense. Is, he has better receivers, a better tight end, obviously a better running back, and much better offensive line with one of the best, if not the best, play callers in the NFL. That's so, fair. He, he would be better with the 49ers than with the Bears, obviously. Yeah. I'll yeah. Give you well, that. who wouldn't be? Yeah, All right, second down. Sits, sure. Yeah. Sure. All right, second down. The Vikings could make some moves and increase their cap space to around $50 million. What would you do if you were them? Well, they need a pass rusher. Right? They got to get a pass rusher. Right, but you got to have a quarterback. Yeah, they yeah. also need a quarterback. Like what what are Big they going to do like and and you know they're they're letting Daniel Hunter walk, right? Yeah. Like Yeah. They what are they doing? Him. They can't afford him. Well, they should let Harrison Smith go. That'll save you about 12 million. But that's that's just part of it. Yeah. Like but what are they going to do with the quarterback spot? I have no that's clue. That's a great question. No clue. And Justin Jefferson's watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I'm Justin Jefferson, I don't want to play on a rebuild. Why would you? No. He's the best in the game right now. Well, he's going to get paid wherever he goes. Sure, sure. Yeah. I think he just wants to get the bag. I just, I, I, I have can't no see them clue. paying him $40 million. Would they be paying him 40 million? It'd be like 35 Who's that, Cousins? Yeah. It'd, it'd, be, it'd be in the 40 neighborhood. It'd be in the 40 yeah. neighborhood. Uh, no doubt. I don't know, man. Go. God he man. Dude, Justin... Kirk Cousins has made so much fucking money in his career, and he's going to get another One thing he's good at. Money making Mitch, right? Facts. But he's, he's got him. He's oh, yeah. got him by he's the balls, by right? The balls. Like, Short and curly. He's got him over a barrel. Because what are they going to do for real? What are you going to go to Justin Jefferson and say, hey, um, sign this $140 million four-year contract. <laughs> um, Zach Wilson stepping in to be the quarterback. Yeah, no, that's not going to fly. DNC ENT says sign Russ, draft JJ bench or er, yeah, sign Russ, draft JJ. Well, yeah, it's a Lions fan. Please do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was talking about it yesterday, and me and Easy were talking about what if the Vikings drafted JJ and Blake Corum because they need a running back too. Oh, shit. I was like that. That would be Neil's dream. Two Michigan players go to his most hated team on the NFC. Honestly, it would be, yeah. <laughs> if they get rid of Cousins, I don't think drafting JJ is a bad move. I don't know. No, honestly, I like JJ as a prospect. I, yeah, he might not make it that far. Yeah, honestly. they don't. They don't have. They would have to move capital, right? Yeah, to do that. Quick sidebar. Yeah. Quick sidebar. Sorry, all you Michigan and Lions fans that are saying the Lions should draft Blake Corum in the third round Y'all are tripping. fucking drunk. Yeah. That is, Y'all you tripping. are smoking crack. There is no reason the Detroit Lions should draft a third string quarterback or running back in the third round. That is the dumbest shit I've yeah. ever heard. Like I running back room. He would be your third string running back. You don't draft that in the third round. You know, I'll take this further. If I'm Blake Corum, I don't want to go to the Lions. Yeah, I want to go to the Lions. I could be the, the, the uh, number two, yeah. honestly. It's not going to be in Detroit. They got the best backfield in the NFL. Our Vandalay says Flannel's pants would be on the ground if that happened. Can you confirm? On the ground if uh, JJ if, and Corum both meet up in Minnesota. I mean, I'd rather them be somewhere else. Right. But, but I think JJ to Minnesota is a good spot if they if they get rid of Cousins. They need they would need a quarterback, and he might be the best one available at that point. I'm glad, I'm glad the chat is agreeing with me because okay, they're, that is good they're smart and they, they know what they're talking about. That is that is very, very good. All I right, mean, what I, we got next? I like Blake Gorham as, as a person. I don't really like him as an NFL prospect personally yeah. because of the mileage, the injuries, and his size. But drafting him in the third round to the Lions would be yeah. just – That would be treason. Be, that would be treason. All right, uh, next question. Packers need a safety pretty badly. 
Seems to be a pretty good time to go shopping for a safety, yeah. doesn't it? This kind of shit happens for the Packers all the time. It really does. Like the like the the area they're deficient in just so happens where yeah. eleven of them got cut the yesterday. Ever. Oh, and we got five former Pro Bowlers on the <laughs> right. they're sitting out there right now. At the moment, they need a safety the most. Hey, but as I said before, all those safeties had down years. I, if I were the Packers, I would re-sign one of Darnell Savage or Rudy Ford. I would at least one of them. I think they go Justin Simmons. I mean, yeah, Justin Simmons obviously has a pedigree. But I think he's the best out of who's, yeah. who's out there. I agree with you, yeah. 100%. He ugh, would be him the best. in a Packers unit. Yeah, be, he, yeah. Ugh. I would not like that. Yuck. No, but you're, that's that, that's a good point, though, because there's, there's safeties who have been great, at least at some points in their career, even recently, that are just coming available every day. This is, it's so I Packers. The, I hope the yeah, Packers man. make the worst move and sign Jamal Adams. I, I hope awesome. they do, too. Dude, yeah. they can't God, I done. hope they, they do, they too. Won't do that. Jamal Adams is going to be out of the league. He sucks yeah. right now. Yeah. He's not good. He sucks. Yeah. All right, fourth down. All right, fourth down, fourth question of the NFL, NFC North nickel package. Bonus Bears. They're reportedly in the mix for Daniil Hunter. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when does their defense get scary to you? That would make their defense the, extremely scary absolutely. to Absolutely. And this is what I'm trying to drive home, everybody. And I've been saying it. And I get laughed at, mocked, scorned ridiculed every time I bring this up and you guys continue to ignore it but it's real Bears are, they are in the mix they're building they're fin to be a player you, yeah. for them like when is it enough guys mm -hmm. when do they have your attention hell, hell well, of cap space yeah. like come on now. I think you could argue that their defense was dangerous ish last year they were the number one rushing yeah. defense in the NFL mm -hmm. and you know when Montez Sweat got here got there he played the best football right. of his career he basically gave them a pass rush and Jalen Johnson was the best corner in the league yeah. last year Still he allowed a 33.3 passer rating allowed which is insane <laughs> TJ Edwards was one of the best linebackers last year at over 150 tackles three picks two and a half sacks I mean at every level they've got dudes. And if you put Daniil Hunter and Montez Sweat Ooh. on the same defensive line, that's the best bookend pass rushers in the NFL by far. That's 30 yeah. sacks yeah. In, in their sleep. So, yes. Are they already have my attention in terms of their defense if they get Daniil Hunter. I, I don't even want to fathom that. Yeah, yeah, that would suck. I don't. Don't let it happen, Lions. Uh, Woolworthsports.com chat thread. Uh, that's message scrolled by, so my apologies. But somebody asked, what does David Montgomery uh, contract look like? He's a very high-paid high running back this year. He's got two more years, I think, like $6 uh, million each, right? Yeah, yeah but they, yeah, they, they took a haircut on the front end of that deal mm -hmm. in order and added a little to the back end. But you do, if you wanted to... If you did want to like move on because they asked about like the cap casualty situation, in 2025 you could let him go, save about nine million in cap space, take mm. on two and a quarter of dead cap. That so, might happen. Too. That's probably I would I could definitely that, see that. Yeah, happen. that might so, happen. Jameer you know, Gibbs takes the next step, yeah. get a back behind him, keep the train the rolling. The ecosystem keeps yep. going. Yep. The ecosystem keeps going. I can see uh, it. Fifth down I want to do when we come back from the break. How about we do that? Sounds good to me. Because, again, we did that. Let's react to it because we have a fifth down question yeah. when we come back. There is no question about the card game, though. That's sweeping the nation. That is Jack Labrador. You can play it on your phone right now. Go to jacklabrador.gg. Scan the QR code on the screen right above my dome there with my glasses on. Two new symbols in a franchise-changing three-point play. Once you go, Jack, never, ever, never, ever, never going back. That's right, Jack Labrador. Go to jacklabrador.gg. Learn to play today. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Game is one in the trenches, and our big fellas don't mess around. The Woodward Heavyweights on Woodward Sports. I love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merch. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. What's 
than crispy chicken and pizza while watching your favorite team play. Let me Nothing. tell you about Soroki's crispy chicken and pizza. Their food is amazing, and their locations are popping up all over Metro Detroit. You see the list of them right there on the graphic. They got one in Warren. It's like a mile and a half away from my house. Great mm. stuff. Perfect takeout option featuring hand-breaded fried chicken, New York pizza, fresh salads, sides, and more. Check out their full menu and find the closest Sorokis near you at Sorokis.com. That's S-A-R-O-K-I-S.com. Sorokis and Woodward Sports. Now that's crispy. Coming on the stretch here on a Friday, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Flannel in for DMAT KG. Of course, Spencer racks on racks on racks as well. I see Terry Foster lurking, yeah. which Love alerts you. me that he may be on the final word today. Is that is that true? Is, can, can we go to... Is this thing working? Yes, yes, that is accurate. You know what's the great thing about being on the final word? You get free All you water? Have, huh? You get, you get, you get lemon water? water? Brought to you? Brought no, no, no. All you have to do is turn to Maz and say, neat or on the block, and they give you a double shot of bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you got today. Terry, you said something interesting about uh, Michigan and the Detroit Lions when we were in the break. Yes, I think all of you are idiots. <laughs> Don't you realize that the solution for the Lions every year is to purge the Michigan's roster and just bring them up to the Lions? You're right. <laughs> you're going to learn your lesson. Bring you're, them you're absolutely right. Who are you on with today? Braylon Alexander Edwards. There you go. And All Maz. right. And Mass. There and it is. Right. Two to four on the final word. The final word. Tap in, everybody. T Foss, my guy. Good Love to you. see him as as always. Um but we had fifth down of, yeah. of the nickel package. Hit me with it, Spenny. Fifth down of the nickel package. Simple and sweet. Who wins the division next year? The Lions. The Lions. Come on now. Now, yes. But he, I I, I want to Forewarn everybody. Yeah. Okay. This isn't going to be the walkover that it was last no, year. No, it's not. You're not gonna. You're not gonna win the division before you finish your Christmas shopping this year. All right. It's not going to go down like that. The schedule is harder. The other teams are better. You see what I'm saying? Like, <gasps> there's going to be some struggles at some time. Mm-hmm. And I, and I'll go out on another limb. You might see the Lions lose two games in a row next year at some point. <gasps> you yeah, might. Sure. Now I know that will shake every fan. <laughs> Every right. Lions fan, because we're not used to that after it happens one year, <laughs> where they could lose two games in a row, Flannel. They could. And uh, honestly, if they do, I'm not going to be mad at Lions fans for panicking a little bit. Just a little bit. I know that like you're trying to be more reasoned and everything. What? but uh, That's such a hard thing to do. Hey, no, 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 I, I, I understand. But Remember like, when the 49ers lost three in a row? Yeah, yeah. I, I get that. I'm just saying that the Lions have to win the division again. They've got to, I think it's Super Bowl or bust personally. So they've got to find a way. And I still think that they're the best team in the NFC. I understand that the Green Bay Packers, they were almost the Lions opponent in the NFC Championship game. So you got to take them seriously. And the Bears, especially if they add Daniil Hunter, that defense would be frightening. But I just, it's got to be the Lions. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah. They're good too. I'm, I'm sick of this narrative that, oh, we got a, a harder schedule. We, we're we a better team too. So, and I expect them through free agency in the draft to improve this team. And four and two, uh, five and one two years ago, four and two last year. The Lions I, have I to still win. Th- I think that's definitely repeatable. The yeah. four and two, five and one in the division, definitely yeah. repeatable. It's just like, it's not going to be the walkover that it was last year, everybody. No, so just be no. prepared. Yeah. You know, I like to tell people, be prepared. Packers are coming. The Bears, we still don't know, but I, I would be on the lookout for them, too. I'll tell you I'll what, man. It, I'll take it a step further. As my high school special teams coach, Coach Essen, used to say, be prepared to be prepared. It's yeah. big facts. Ooh, I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah, that was my guy. <laughs> Punt team! Punt team! Yeah. Coach, Coach Edson was the man. No, I, I do. I do. Uh, I like that one a lot, man. When, so Whenever uh, the other coaches were, like, doing their meetings as, like, because they were teachers, so they had to get taken away, like, one day of the week for our conditioning, Coach Essa would just let us run Air Force, which is basically just ultimate frisbee with a football. Yeah. Instead of doing the 10 laps. It was awesome. Air Force football's dope. Man. Oh, yeah. I remember playing that in gym. It's so much fun. Yep, you can catch the pass off the bounce. Mm-hmm. It's wild, man. It was absolutely wild. Uh, Art Vandelay, Braylon's probably flying around Detroit right now just preventing crime before the show. If you guys <laughs> haven't caught that, by yeah. the way, He's He's bang, 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 incredible no. story about Braylon Edwards working out at the gym. Yep. Imagine thinking you're tough, fighting an 80-year-old man, and then seeing Braylon <laughs> Edwards walk up to you. Right. Like, oh, shit. That, <laughs> that, oh, that, that dude probably hit him with a... 
the smoke, he's like, oh, that's different. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that is the greatest piece of evidence that karma exists because yeah. he was yeah. beating up on, and even Braylon didn't even know this. He thought he was in his 60s. He was an 80 year old man. And your reward for that is getting Braylon Edwards, a former NFL player who are greater physical specimens. Like than a any unicorn even, NFL right, player. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like greater physical specimen than any of us could ever hope to be. Just like coming to restrain you and you're I, done i remember like me and braylon were messing around in the hallway and he was showing me like how he'd beat a press and like he was like press on me like you're pressing me off the line i was like all right so i put like i went to press on him and he chopped my arms that shit hurt so bad he bruised my arm for like, and it wasn't even like full pot he just like swiped it down it's just damn like him and d-mac yeah people don't understand they, they don't Until understand what goes on these guys yeah. like even like joik when I saw Joik and Stick was like, oh, I could tackle Joik when I was... No. No. <laughs> no, you can't. No, Dude, Joik's geez. legs are refrigerators. Like, those no. guys are different. It, like, he's... It's funny, too, because they, they, you know, they're both here at the network. Yeah. I don't want anything that Joik Bell has to offer. Absolutely no. not. He's no. a giant I, I would see him walk in the door and go... Now, now, imagine, like, you're in an NFL game, like, playing for money, and you have to bring that down. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's not easy. No, Joyke Bell legitimately looks like he could play right now. Yes, he does. Like great shape. Like right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, even Lindsey Hunter, he's another one. I mean, man, it's actually yeah. It, yeah. it's quite. It, it speaks to how much of a privilege it is to be around professional athletes all the time. But even Lindsey Hunter, like, and I'm not saying this to, to disparage him, but on the basketball court, he doesn't look that big. But mm-hmm. when you see him in person, it's like shit. He's taller than me. Yeah. And the yeah. hands, the hands, the of hands basketball are players. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It, it's incredible, yeah. man. Absolutely. Like I think I have big hands, and then I dap up Lindsey. I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Shit. Yeah. Or Brand, same with Braylon. Like, well, everybody has big hands compared to JJ McCarthy. That is true. It does have He's a got nine, tiny hands? Yes, eight, he does. Nine inch. Can you hold a whopper? I was. I was. Yeah. Yeah. That's a live look at JJ McCarthy's look at hands. JJ by McCarthy, the way. Yeah. Hey, still be, still be a. Uh, I think he'll. Go, I, I think he'll be a top ten pick when it's all said and done. Again, supply and demand. Supply and demand. Yep. No, yeah. absolutely. Hey, let's do the questions for the room when we come back. The final. Right. We haven't done that yeah. in a minute. Final. You know, final segment on a Friday. Questions for anybody yeah. in here. Uh, we'll give you a couple minutes there to populate those. Tell them about Lady Jane's final. Lady Jane's, of course. Come to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience. Register to win a trip of your dreams and all expenses paid. Paid suite for the 2024 NCAA Tournament. Michigan ain't going to be there. That's right. No expense spared for you and five of your best buds. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. Every year after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Game is one in the trenches, and our big fellas don't mess around. The Woodward Heavyweights on Woodward Sports. Come to any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists and register for a -a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win an all-expenses-paid suite for the 2024 NCAA Tournament for you and five of your best buds. That's right, college basketball's most elite event. You and your five best friends just get to any Lady Jane's today for an award-winning haircut experience and automatically register to win the trip of your dreams. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Woodward has a new show in the morning. That's right. Wake up, Woodward. There you see Sam Flannel, Kool-Aid, Broder in the house every morning, 8 to 10 a.m. right here on the Woodward Sports Network. Start your day with that guy on your screen, huh? The gun show. (laughs) And that beard right there. Cut off Flannel's different level. It it is different level. Uh, Wake up, Woodward, every morning, 8 to 10, right here on Woodward Sports Network. All right, final segment of the week, everybody. We did it. We made it to the weekend. Yeah. We did it. Props to us. Um, ask questions for the room. Uh, go Blue 7. Higher or lower for Michigan State? Eight wins. 
That's your area, Spencer. If you're putting it at seven and a half, I would probably go under. I think they'll be at seven or eight, right around there. Okay. They're going to have a good team this year. Uh, I mean, it can't be worse than they were last year, you know. That's facts. And fucking that terrorist Jay Johnson is not calling the offense anymore, so it's easily going to be That threat to national security. (laughs) I can't believe that bum got another fucking job. Hey, the networks are deep, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The networks are deep, and they take up for each other. Adiz 411, what seed would Oakland be in the tournament, Neil? My guess would be a 13, 13 or a 14, depending on how the rest of them shake out. But just judging off the Horizon League tournament, the two seed, three seed, and four seed all lost last night. So I got a feeling it's going to be wild. You know, if you get a bunch of, you know, seven seeds from the SOCON that win it, that'll yeah. bump everybody. That'll bump everybody up a couple of spot uh the away fan uh passed my cdl test this morning official cdl holder hey shout uh, out, shout out man absolutely congratulations absolutely the away fan props to you uh what else do we have in here uh mason leach flannel what's your thoughts on ward manual bringing back Jawan howard for another season oh you know his thoughts. no it's i mean you know my thoughts it's an absolute embarrassment michigan basketball doesn't take it they, they're not a serious program they're the worst program in all of Power Five after having an entire run of great success and even the beginning of Juwan. Like the, the entire run with Beeline, or at least the last part of the run with Beeline, and then the first couple of years of Juwan were pretty good. They've went to the gutter in three years. It's an embarrassment. <laughs> uh, Todd saying, Neil, what's been your favorite game to call in your career? Like the actual game itself, and I think TFOS was in the building for that one. Michigan State and Oakland at the Palace. Michigan State Mm -hmm. was number one in the nation, and we had Kay Felder, Mm -hmm. and it went to overtime. Such an electric, high-level game. It's the, it, to this day, it was the largest crowd in the history of the Palace. That's yeah. throughout the championship years of the Pistons and wow. everything like that. Legendary. Uh, funny fact, too, Oakland and Michigan State had the highest basketball crowd in the history of Little Caesars Arena as well. Legendary. Yeah, so remember that also. Uh, and then my first NBA game, obviously, was probably my favorite because I made it to the NBA. Damn you right. know, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, ma- no matter what happens, you know, I, I made it to the league. So I, that, I'm real proud of that one, too. So that one, uh, that one is out there as well. Uh, Saggy Richard, flannel. Should I kiss my sister on the first date or wait a time or two? <laughs> what? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Go for it, brother. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what your you got sister. to lose? I'm your sister. Yeah. Ooh. What you got to lose, man? <laughs> Spencer Rachter uh, answered that one for you. Um, Stephen David. Jeff Leppard sucks. <laughs> Stephen David, are we getting excited for the draft in Detroit yet? It is starting to get real, right? Yeah. yeah. Like they laid out the plans. Yeah. That's pretty wild. They put out that little Firefest map. Yeah. It's awesome. I know. I'm excited for it. It's going to be a good day. Yes. Uh, I went Terrence. to an NFL draft breakfast yesterday. Hey. All right. What's, what's the. All right. Bring, bring it, us it, inside, it, T-Boss. It's going to be exciting. They're going to have areas, not just Campus Martius and the riverfront, but it's going to be like. Uh, Little Caesars Arena, Capitol Park, uh, areas outside of downtown. Try, maybe Royal, even Royal Oak. They're going to have the try to give you the same experience outside of the the draft, all throughout the city. Is what they're going to try to do. And Neil, I know you got that big truck. They're going to shut down some streets downtown Detroit. So if you got somewhere to go, get there early. No, I'll be with you, and we'll just take the helicopter. Okay, sounds, sounds good. fair. It's fair. No, I, I am. I am getting excited for it. Uh, absolutely, because, but you know what's funny about it? Like, it's cool that it's in your city, you're in our city, and everything like that. But the thing I'm most excited about is it's Brad Holmes putting in picks. Yeah. My goal is to find Mina Kimes and say hi to her. Good luck. So, Mina Kimes, if you're in the city of Detroit for the draft, Spinny I'll buy you a drink hi. and say hi. You're awesome. Oh, oh, Neil, Neil, we're yes, not sir. taking the helicopter. We're taking the booty lounge. No, uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> However, we get there. How about Spencer Raxter shooting a shot? By hey, the way, I, yeah. man. I love Mina Kimes. She's awesome. That's the clip for the show, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Shoot or shoot, Spencer. Hey, shoot or shoot, man. Shoot or shoot. Yeah. Um, WoodwardSports.com chat thread. Um. Drew says, do we bring back the hockey town at center ice and retire 91 for the first home playoff game? They should. Yes. <laughs> Definitely yes. retire 91. Yes. Yep. Definitely retire 91. God, that still bothers Mina me. Mina is part Filipino, says so Mike G. I believe she's Korean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to say. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's about all we can do this yeah, week, that's right? About all. That's and about again, it. Uh, before we sign off, 
R.I.P. to Akira Toriyama, yes. legend of the anime and manga community, created the most legendary anime character of all time. If you don't know who he is, he's the creator, author, and illustrator of the Dragon Ball series. So, uh, R.I.P. to him, and prayers up for his family and fans everywhere. Detroit Dabber 313, she's married with a kid, LMAO, but hey, you can't hey. score if you don't shoot, Spenny. <laughs> Soccer's I think that, got a goalie. He can still score. All right. T-Foss is giving me that, that, that nod. I'm sure Pete Spivek is lurking. Yeah, like, get right. your shit Somewhere. and get out of here. <laughs> yeah. For the final word, two to four. T-Foss in for Ryan or Money. For Sam Flannel, for KG, for Spencer Raxter, I'm Neil Rule. Thanks for tapping in. Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network. Well, see you later. Yep.